from the beautiful New England countryside. We are at Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. The Atlanta Falcons and the New England Patriots. Cloudy skies, threatening indeed with the wind coming up. Perhaps some rain before this game is over. The lights are on. Temperatures, however, a mile 51 degrees for the 1st of November. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Ryan with Terry Bradshaw here at Sullivan Stadium. Two teams very much in playoff contention. The Patriots running behind the Jets at 5-3 and three in the AFC East. And the Atlanta Falcons, a surprise team so far, but struggling, Terry, over these last few games. And the quarterback story, a very big one today. David Archer has been having his problems for Atlanta. Tony Eason's been having none for the New England Patriots. Well, what's got to happen today for Atlanta? Dan Henning wants to run the football. Riggs has to have a big game to control to control the line of scrimmage, take some of the pressure off David Archer. Archer has to relax and enjoy himself. The offensive line's main concern today, Tim, is keeping Andre Tippett, number 56, out of the, out of the backfield. Now, key to victory for Atlanta, I believe, is the ability of Archer to scramble, get out of the pocket, and throw deep on the Patriots secondary. Well, it hasn't mattered who's been at quarterback for the Patriots. Grogan's done well, Eason's done well, but Eason is the main man. Not an interception so far this season. Well, the other thing is this, is that Raymond Barry says, I want to throw the football and I want to keep a balanced running passing attack. They haven't done that this season. Not very well with Collins and James in the backfield running. I feel like today, though, if they fool around in the first half and not throw the football in school points early, they're in trouble because in the last eight games, in the second half alone, the Atlanta Falcons They've only given up 34 points. Today, key to victory for the Patriots, score early. All right, Terry. The Falcons will have the first chance, however, because it'll be Tony Franklin kicking off for New England. William Andrews is back as a kickoff return man, and that's the kind of team player he is. Get me involved. Flip Austin back there with him, and the ball comes down to Austin at the five. and out to the 25-yard line and the 26, perhaps. Straight up the field, and David Archer will lead out the Atlanta Falcons, who have been struggling on offense in recent weeks. A loss to the Rams last week, a tie against the 49ers the week before. Some pressure on Archer now because they brought in second stringer Turk Schoenert last week's game. New England will have Brent Williams, the rookie, Toby Williams, and Garen Barris across the front. The dangerous Tippett and Blackman, the outside linebackers, with Nelson and Johnny Rembert for the injured Lawrence McGrew. The pet, Marion, Claiborne, and James, a very tough secondary indeed. The number one defense in the NFL. On first down, it is completed to Charlie Brown, number 89. Short of the first down yardage needed, but it'll leave a second and three for Atlanta. And the Falcons with Riggs, the running back, in the one-back offense. Ken Wisenhut is the U-back, or whatever you want to call him. Floyd Dixon, Charlie Brown, the wide receivers, and Arthur Cox, the tight end. Ken Scully, Radloff, Bill Fralick, and Glenn Howe. Now, Glenn Howe in the spot normally occupied by the injured Brett Miller. And then with Eric Sanders going down to a back injury this week, they're down to number three at right tackle. We'll be watching that. Second and three, Gerald Riggs stacked up at the line of scrimmage by Steve Nelson, the veteran linebacker, number 57. No gain on the play. They might spot him about a half yard, so it'll be third and a long two for Atlanta. Gerald Riggs coming into the game with 695 yards, ranked number four, number four in the National Conference rushing. Two more wide receivers in the game. Joey Jones, Sylvester Stamps, comes in at running back, but they'll usually get him in the pattern. Third and two. Trying the run, Sylvester Stamps, and it'll be close to the first down, and yes, he has it. Sylvester Stamps, not a big guy to be running that ball straight ahead, 175-pounder. So the Falcons perhaps crossing up New England. Garen Barris made the tackle, but it will be a first down Atlanta. Bringing in Stamps, usually in a short yardage situation, if they were going to run the football, they would have Riggs back there right. to bring in Stamps, and so New England says, hey, they're going to throw the football. They ran it. Well, I thought the same thing. And Stamps pulled him. Little guy ran up the middle for the first down. Play action on first down. Archer gets some time, has his man Wisenhunt. Wisenhunt. Picks up five, maybe six yards out over the 40-yard line of Atlanta, the 42. Fred Marion, free safety number 31, made the tackle. Ken Wisenhunt, 
the H back, U back, roving back, whatever you want to call him, a handy guy. He's a big, strong guy. He's a good blocker. That's what they want from him in this offense, and he can catch the ball, Terry. Does a good job. I like the offense so far. First down, play action, five yards, six yards. Real good. Second and five, Atlanta at their own 41. Makes the setback. Two receivers out to the right. Brown in motion. Riggs out the left side. Not a lot of running room behind Scully and Ken. Don Blackman, the outside linebacker, number 55. Six-year veteran from Tulsa made the stop. Riggs is a type of back, Tim, that likes to go straight ahead, straight away power. Now, he's not the kind of back that likes to bounce and hop from hole to hole. The thing that New England did was blitz, push all their people in gaps, therefore took away all the holes for Riggs. He bounced, he bounced, he bounced. He got nothing. Two extra backs in the secondary of New England, Rod McSwain and Ernest Gibson on the passing down, third and four, and they have stamps in there on the passing down. And this time they do get him out in the traffic. The pass out the sideline, complete for a first down. Charlie Brown took quite a smack over there for McSwain, but he has the first down for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Rod McSwain acquired in a trade from the Falcons in 84. Charlie Brown, the former Redskin. McSwain, a free safety, playing out on Charlie Brown. They had the blitz once again. They gave him man-to-man -man coverage. A good time, a good uh, choice by Archers. He set up, made his decisions quickly, and then fired the football in there. Charlie Brown into the game with 30 catches on the season, the leading receiver for the Falcons. First down, the Falcons on the move. They're now at their own 49-yard line. Gerald Riggs trying to get wide. Cuts it up beautifully as Don Blackman did his job, turned him upfield, and Riggs took advantage. He just rolled over the first tackler, and Fred Marion finally pulled him down. It'll be a gain of six, maybe seven yards on the play. Now that time, their third first down, the first two times they had had the ball, on first down, play action passes, five and six yards. That time, came out, little play, gave the ball off to Riggs, first down, but New England came up in blitz, and they were chasing him, so they're guessing with him now. Second and three, Atlanta now in Patriots territory. Opening offensive series. Short drop by Archer, forced out now by Tippett. Has a man. First down, Atlanta. It's Floyd Dixon, the rookie wide receiver from Stephen Austin. And the ball advanced to the 35-yard line of the Pats. The thing that is so good about Archer is his ability to get out of trouble and make things happen. A little quick set, everyone is covered, now he feels the pressure, he gets outside, and now a good job, as you see number 89 come over, I mean 86, Dixon gets out, releases, gets open, and gives him a target. Two tight ends are now in at the 35-yard line. Ron Middleton, number 87, joining Arthur Cox for the Falcons. First down at the 35 of New England. behind the blockers, has a hole, breaks a tackle, first down Atlanta to the 22-yard line of the Patriots. An impressive opening drive for Dan Henning and the Atlanta Falcons. Good job by the left tackle, Mike Kinn, 78, and the left guard, John Scully, 61, getting out, giving some blocking for Riggs. This is a good job. Now, Riggs is going to stretch it out and then cuts back, right, look at, right in between there. Good job that time, and then just over-muscles everyone, out-muscles everyone to get down for a first down. 225-pound Gerald Riggs. And last week, he was held to 43 yards by the Rams. A tough defense, but also the pattern of that game that came in the back. He didn't get the carries he usually gets. He's rolling now. Ten plays on this drive for Atlanta. And a miscue there. Archer just goes down to keep the ball and a flag with some early movement and perhaps a miscount a miss uh, snap well, on the count. It looked like Cox, the tight end, number 88. He knew the blitz was coming. False start, number 88 offense. Five yard penalty, will replay the first down. Cox saw the blitz coming, he knew they were coming. He, he said, oh my gosh, I've got to get out here and get set quick. And he got a little bit too anxious trying to get into his man, got off sides. Gene Barth, the referee, with the first penalty of the game. Leaves first and 15, and the ball spotted exactly at the 28-yard line of the New England Patriots. Dan Henning, his team at 5-2-1. and one. That tie coming against the 49ers. Lost last week to the Rams. Still just a half game behind 
in the NFC West. Rakes trying to get back that five yards. Gets about four. Loose ball recovered by the Falcons. The ball knocked loose from Gerald Rakes, but Atlanta maintains control. And Mike Kim, number 78, the left tackle, came up with the football. Something that Gerald Riggs is excellent at is not fumbling. Now look at tip at 56, the guy that we said that they have to be concerned about. He's getting in there and not, he's not the guy that's going to knock it out. It's pulled loose from Riggs and all that pile. And then Ken, the left tackle, recovers the football. It is second down and a long 12, we'll call it. The ball just outside the 25. And a timeout on the field here just as the Falcons came out over the ball. And some discussion here. Are we in a replay circumstance? Indisputable visual evidence. Well, Gene Barth and uh, the head linesman, the umpire, Joe Gardy's up there, I know. That's replay guys sitting up there, nice and warm. <laughs> the wind has come up here at Sullivan Stadium, blowing in from our left to the end zone the open here in Sullivan Stadium. I'm let's, not sure what's uh, what let's it. see. Let's see if we can find out what happened. Just a straight ahead. Wisenhunt coming inside. Rick's trying to get in behind him. Now he's virtually stopped. The official on the field ruled that forward progress had stopped the play. There was no fumble. All right. Instant replay says the call stands. You can see Nelson 57 getting his hands on the football and pulling it out of Riggs. Riggs forcing the fumble, but they say, hey, Ford progress has stopped Atlanta's football. I did not hear the whistle before I saw the fumbles. So. Well, we're 100, we're 500 yards yeah. away from the field. Tim. That's it. So uh, clearly no fumble on the play, no harm, no foul here. Stamps trying to get wide, and the Patriots with a great job defensively on the short side would not let him turn it upfield. Raymond Claiborne, number 26, just forced him out of bounds. Interesting that they're letting Stamps run with the ball. That's twice now on this uh, series. Well, they have a, they had their computer readout, and it says that every time Stamps is in the backfield, he's primarily a receiver. Oh, and so therefore, they're playing passing situations. Therefore, Atlanta's Good turning man. around and using him to run to kind of offset that. Now you have an interesting situation, 21-yard line. What Archer has to be thinking is blitz, blitz, man coverage. Got to get the ball away fast. Third and seven at the 20 three-yard line. Great drop from Archer. Has time in the pocket. Hit from behind. And the loose ball recovered. Was it an incomplete pass? Was it a fumble? But it was recovered by the Falcons. Big number 55. Wayne Radloff, the center. Actually, the thing that happened was as Dave set up, he set up eight yards deep. The thing he should have done is take one more step up. Now set up. Now go forward. What happened? He didn't go forward, and he allowed Garen Barris, the defensive right end, to get a hand on the ball and knock it loose. What a job by Garen Barris, beating his man and getting the quarterback from behind. So Luckhurst, who suffered back spasms in the warm-up, will attempt from the 31-yard line. And he has it. A 41-yard field goal by Mick Luckers and Atlanta opens the scoring on their opening series. You can see him looking a little sore as he comes off the field, but he did the job. Atlanta in front. This was Mick Luckers during the warm-up prior to today's game. He suffered back spasms, went to the locker room at about, oh, 12.15, 12.20. They worked on him for about 40 minutes. He may have had to kick off to open the game. That was not necessary because Atlanta won the toss. But there he was moments ago out there kicking a 41-yard field goal right between the uprights. Now, however, they have opted to let Rick Donnelly, the punter, kick off for Atlanta. Luckers would normally have these duties. But Donnelly was a kicker at Wyoming. And in two years there, he was 10 of 19 on field goal attempts. So he had the experience but the short kickoff brought upfield by Stephen Starring number 81 and the Patriots will have the ball for the first time at their own 24 yard line. Wendell Kaysen made the tackle for the Falcons. Tony Eason the league's top rated quarterback brings out the New England Patriots and he will face this defense for Atlanta in the 3-4 under Marion Campbell Mike Gann Tony Casillas and Rick Bryan, Wilkes, Curry, Rady, and Williams, the linebackers. 
David Crudup and Robert Moore are two newcomers in the secondary because of injuries to Bobby Butler, gone for the year with a broken leg, and Kenny Johnson out with a staph infection. On first down, Craig James picks up maybe a yard for the Patriots, close to the 25-yard line. For New England, Eason, the quarterback, James and Tony Collins, a well-balanced offensive backfield pair. Morgan, Fryer, dangerous deep receivers. Greg Hawthorne, the converted wide receiver and tight end. Their offensive line, Holloway, Fairchild, Brock, Wook, and Steve Moore. Second down, Eason wants to throw, and it is intercepted. Picked off by number 28, Brett Clark, the first-year man from Nebraska. Now, bear in mind, there is a flag down on the play, however. Bear in mind that Eason had gone 178 passes without an interception in regular season Holding play. 67 offense. Penalty refused. First down. Steve Moore charged with the holding. And Terry Bradshaw, it sure looked like Brett Clark knew exactly where that ball was going to be. Brett Clark got beat that time by Morgan, but what had happened was, was that Eason threw the football too easily. He laid it up and nice and easy. He should have gunned that football out there. There was no one between the receiver and Eason. Therefore, he should have just drilled it in there. He didn't. Brett Clark did a fine job of breaking on the ball and intercepting. So Atlanta with an early turnover and a 3-0 lead. First down at the 34-yard line of New England. Archer dropped immediately before he could get anywhere. It must have been a mistake in the blocking out the right side on that play, Terry. Well, what's happening is that New England is coming up now and showing blitz. David Archer is going through a checklist on blitzes. If they show a certain blitz, he has a play that he would like to audible to against that blitz. That time they got on the wrong page, wrong snap count, went ahead and fell on the football and lost two yards. You know, the thing that's interesting here, Tim, is that it's 7 8 and counting, and Atlanta's had this football the whole time in this first quarter. They continue this. That's the best way to beat New England. They made 13 plays on their opening drive, Terry, and getting the ball right back on the interception. Short drop. It's off to Wizenight. He's going to throw the ball. Can't find a man and runs it. job by Ken Wisenhut. The eighth back, number 45, a second-year man from Georgia Tech. You gotta like the way Atlanta is coming out and attacking New England. Little razzle-dazzle. This time, Archer will throw a lateral to Wisenhut, number 45. Now, he's gonna look downfield, and he's gonna try to throw it deep. No one there. Everyone's covered. So what do you do? Tuck it and run and show that great athletic ability that every tight end has. Look at this. Inside, outside, picking a good block by Ken. Still going. 17-yard gain for Ken Wisenhunt, 6'3", 235-pounder. Essentially a tight end, but in this offense, as we've explained, they call him an H-back, and he blocks, runs, and there he was going to throw. It is in, it oh, oh, in the end zone. Did he have it? Touchdown. Oh, they rule it. Touchdown. It is a touchdown. The hands are still up. Arthur Cox, the tight end. Had it long enough in the end zone. The crowd thinks otherwise. consultation we have them every week indisputable visual evidence you can bet they're going upstairs on this one does he have both feet down does he have possession there's the catch one two after a conference no, it's a touchdown so. Whoa. after a conference it's no a way touchdown. no way well on our view of the instant replay i would have to say uh, that the ball was not in control with two feet down it was stripped just as he got the second foot down the thing that you and i had talked about in talking about atlanta we said that it was very important that something good happened to them early in this football game that definitely was something good the interception by brett clark setting up the touchdown pass from david archer to arthur cox and now further discussion because you see they made the call while we were playing the replay back. And now the replay officials are having another. What, what they did was the officials got together and talked with one another, and they upon themselves said that this is a touchdown. Well, now they feel they realize the booing's going on, so they say, well, we better check this out. Folks, I'm going to tell you, that is an incompletion. Yeah, I have to agree with you, but, uh, you know, every time these kinds of things have come up, I just hope that this whole instant replay thing <laughs> sinks of its own weight. I mean, they had their conference on the field, and even if they were wrong, 
The point is that that control ought to be down there. Now, Joe Gardy's the, the guy. He's doing his job. Let's bear that in mind. He's doing what the league's asking him to do. He saw our replay and has obviously hollered down there and said, hold on, gang. We may have to reverse that. Let's see what the quarterback is thinking. Here's a young man that has had a hard time these last four weeks. There's a pass. Archer's turning around, shaking his head. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He's still not sure. But you can bet one thing, he's hoping that so they say that the touchdown so pass. So is this man, Dan Henning, head coach of the Falcons. And, 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 but I, I, you know, you hate to try and get at somebody's head. That little shake of the chin there, Henning saying, hey, this could take forever. I mean, that's just another reason why this. No, what he's saying, Tim, is he's, say, he's saying they're, they're going to take, they're gonna away take it away. They're going to take it away. Yeah. But also, uh, I mean, this, again, this is part of the, the flawed aspect of this whole instant replay thing. Right or wrong, let the guys on the field make the play. Call. Right, let's look. You have to have possession. You have to have both feet on the ground. Now, the only ruling that could come into effect here is that number 31, Fred Marion, knocked the ball out of his hands, out of Cox's hands. Therefore, that would uh, constitute a touchdown. That's what they're saying. He would have had possession, both feet down, touchdown. But if he knocked the ball out in there, then the guy didn't have possession. Right? Well, he could have had possession, both feet, then knocked it out. Now you, you can hear the roar of the crowd, and you know that they're going to have to play it over. After further review of instant replay, it revealed that the second foot was not down. The pass is incomplete. Second down. Well, Dan Henning is going to say, hey, what, hey, what are you doing to me here? That there's enough, to, you know, there's enough guys out there making the call. Boy, oh, boy. I don't think there's any question that our replay would indicate that it should not have been a touchdown. That, that does not mean that I'm going to support the instant replay. It ought to be left for those guys on the field. Now, you know, Gene Barth and his guys are going to incur the wrath of, uh, of the Henning and the Atlanta fans the rest of the game. People looking in in that area of the country and New England fans are happy here until something goes the other way. All you have to do now is go back in there, second down and 10, come right back and make it happen again. You just got to push that out of your mind and get it in the end zone. It is second and 10 at the 17-yard line. With it in motion, and they give it to Riggs, and Riggs breaks one tackle, but not the next one. It was Toby Williams, the nose man, number 90. Moving over from defensive end to become a nose tackle, the four-year man from Nebraska, and he has been playing awfully well for Ray Berry and company in that new position. No gain. Atlanta inside the 20, you can see in the first part of the season. That's about as consistent as you can get. 100% they got on the board. Not so well the last four games. The effort inside the so-called red zone. Stamps in the lineup now, along with Joey Jones, an extra receiver. Two more defensive backs for the pass. Spring and Gibson. Under pressure, he gets it off complete. Charlie Brown is spun around and driven out. to be a loss on the play. Superb defensive reaction. LePet, number 42, coming on his own. Looked like a delayed blitz by the corner. As you can see, Archer setting up. There's the games in the middle, picked up well by the offensive line. But the left cornerback, number 42, Ronnie LePet, blitzed on his own, forced Archer to get rid of the football to Brown. Solid play downfield once the pass was caught. Nowhere for Brown to go. So Luckers will attempt again. With his back spasms and all, the ball spotted at the 27-yard line. Archer to hold. Luckers, a 37-yard try, and he missed it. Missed it to the right. So the Falcons come up empty after the interception by Clark. You can see Luckers still in obvious pain. 5.05 to play in an eventful first period. We'll be back at Sullivan Stadium in a moment. Tim Ryan and Terry Bradshaw, Sullivan Stadium. Cloudy skies here in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Dan Henning, the cloud over his head. A touchdown callback. And it is 3-0. The field goal missed by Luckers from 36 yards. And the Patriots finally get a chance to do something with the ball again from their own 20-yard line. Eason under pressure. Has a man. Up 
the middle, a first down to the 35-yard line, the tight end, Hawthorne, Greg Hawthorne. One of your old Steelers there, Terry. Last week he caught four passes, Tim, against Buffalo. Outside release, just going up the field. Now what he's doing, he's running down the field. He sees his quarterback in trouble. Now he does the smart thing. He moves towards the quarterback, slows down, catches the football. Good job by Easton of scrambling and getting outside. First down at the 35-yard line. Slot right for the pass. Straight ahead. James, number 32, the three-year man from SMU, plowing with hard running for a six-yard pickup. I talked to him yesterday and I asked him about the rushing attack and about his performance so far. As you can see, 107 rushes for 305 yards. And he said, well, we started slow last year. He only had 485 yards at the halfway point last year. And he says, this is a football team that as the season progresses, we will start running the football better. Second down. Long four, we'll call it. Out of the I formation now for the Pats. Play action, Eason. Got a man open, Irving Fryer. <laughs> to the 25-yard line of the Falcons, Irving Fryer, the big play guy. The big, the, the secret to this was the fact that Stanley Morgan, 86, ran straight down the field and took the safety in the corner with him. Fryer in the center of your screen, a simple crossing route, and a good job that time by Eason of dropping it over the linebacker's head and allowing Fryer the opportunity to run under it and make the grab. 34-yard gain, and Irving Fryer has had a few big drops in recent games that go with spectacular receptions. I'm sure happy to get that first one in a big play situation. First down at the 25. Off tackle left, and he is stacked up. Nowhere to go as he's met by John Rady, the linebacker, number 59. And two or three other red-shirted Falcons arriving at the scene of the crime. Rick Bryan, number 77, defensive right end, Tim. Did a good job of engaging the tackle and forcing him out wide. Why is he, hey, you're looking at him right there, Rick Bryan. He stayed with him, stayed with him, and forced the running back back inside right into Rady, and then Rady made the stop on him. So really credit that play to Rick Bryan. Second and eight. Two yard pick up the ball at the 24 yard line of Atlanta. Eason with release complete the starring. First down yardage for the Patriots moving on this drive. Hit driven back by David Crudup. Crudup getting the start there with the injury to Bobby Butler his second week. He's been a backup coming over from San Diego last year. The thing that's so scary about New England is if you take one receiver out and you bring in a Stefan Starring, you don't lose anything. All five of their receivers, when I talked to Harold Jackson, the wide receiver coach, said all of them average 4.3 in the 40, and all of them can fly and catch the football. <laughs> yeah, they are scary. Talented and scary. First down, Patriots. Tony Cotton. Inside the five-yard line, Collins. Six-year man from East Carolina. And the Patriots threatening at the five. Scott Case, the guy to drive him out. It'll be second and about a football for a first down. If they go short here, they'll have four cracks at that end zone. Trailing three nothing. 17. Pardon me. Yes, 217 is correct. Flag on the play. Collins had the yardage for the first down, but the signal is against the New England Patriots. Illegal motion, offense, the tailback had not set when the man went in motion. Five yard penalty will replay the down. Well described infraction by Barth. What happens is when they set the offensive line and the quarterback goes set, they set the line, the back has to be down and hand on the ground for three seconds. That time he did not put his hand down. He put it down, pulled it up too fast. It'll leave second and six for a first down. Ball back outside the 10-yard line. Inside handoff, nearly bobbled. Now the pitch out, picked up by Collins and driven out of bounds for a 
I saw them work on this play yesterday, and I turned around and told you they got this gadget on the option. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really amazes me, and I, I, I failed to understand it, is you drive the length of a football field throwing it and running basic plays. But when you get down here, you start getting fancy. Now, this is a fancy play. It's an option. They're not used to running options. Therefore, it costs them 15 yards. The ball. Why, why do that? Well, that's a, a good question. I, I don't have the answer. Ray Berry might. He didn't call a play, though. Steve Grogan calls the plays, although the game plan put in by the coaching staff, Ray Berry and Rod Humanek, the offensive coordinator, during the course of the week. And Steve Grogan is the guy who calls the plays during the game. Third down and 11. Showing all-out blitz. The shotgun. He's lots of time, but it was almost picked up. Knocked away by James. 26 in on that nickel defense in the passing situation and brings up fourth down for New England. Stephen starring number 81, the, the wide receiver, was running a crossing route and he tripped him. When he tripped, the ball landed right in Britt's hands. Barefooted Tony Franklin will come out to attempt to tie things up here. The points leader in the entire National Football League. 75 points on the season. Former Philadelphia Eagle. Wants to be a sports announcer when he hangs it up. Planning on doing some weekend work next offseason in San Antonio. And he's got that one ruled down the middle. And we are tied with 140 remaining in the first period of play at Sullivan Stadium. The Patriots have tied it up at 3 all. This year's total. Ryan Terry Bradshaw, Sullivan Stadium under cloudy skies in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Tony Franklin has just kicked a 32-yard field goal to tie it up for the New England Patriots at 5-3. and three. In Second place behind the Jets in the AFC East. And Atlanta, a half game back in the NFC West. It'll be William Andrews out to the 28-yard line. And that's where David Archer will start the Falcons. Well, William Andrews getting in some kickoff return duty. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, doubleheader action in game one. The Chicago Bears and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or some of you will see the Rams at New Orleans, a key battle in the NFC West. And the New York Giants will be our doubleheader game at Philadelphia. Arch rivals the Giants and the Eagles, and again, a big one for the Giants, particularly. That game will not be seen in the Atlanta area next Sunday. Here on CBS. Important action in the second half of the season. First down. Rakes stacked up. Center of that Patriots defense. Steve Nelson, the linebacker. You can see Toby Williams on his feet fighting off those blockers, doing the nose tackles job, and the linebackers coming up to make the hit. Garen Barris, number 60, getting a piece of it as well. Toby said, uh, play a nose tackle. Toby, right there in the middle, number 90, folks, Toby Williams said, play a nose tackle. It's like fighting in a phone booth. So he's telling you there's not a lot of room to mess around down there. I don't think he and I could get in a phone booth together. <laughs> he goes to make 275. Extra receiver in on second down, and Archer runs out of time. Barris with a sack. Barris. Now you can see 56, Andre Tippett, coming in the top left of your screen. He's going to come up on the outside. Cox, the tight end, lets him go. Ken picks him up. Now, now Archer stands there, and then Barris comes around on the outside and finally knocks his man down. Barris was a young guy that came in really for Toby Williams last year when Toby was a starter at defensive end, Tim. Toby gets hurt. Barris comes in, plays defensive end, and set a rookie record for sacks with 10 and a half. So that when they bring Williams back, they what are we going to do with you? And I said, well, I don't know. He says, well, how about nose tackle? Great. <laughs> That's about the tone of voice he probably really? said it too. And then, of course, they've got Ken Sims back, and you saw he was right there with Barris. We have an injured player down, and uh, a little hard to identify at the moment. We'll get that for you when we return. I'll show you what happened to Andre Tippett, number 56. You see him laying on the ground there, tending to his knee. 
what happened was right tackle number 71, Glenn Howe, is going to roll backwards, spin over, and lock his right leg around the left leg of Tippett, therefore like a vice, and then when they land, it will just squeeze it and twist it. Watch now. He's rolling over. Now the right leg goes around his left leg. Now when Tippett lands, it's like a pop. It's got it locked up inside and just kind of pops it outside. Crazy things happen. Isn't it amazing how you get hit head on and you get all these vicious tackles and then some little silly roll or something and you get an injury? Yeah, that was a real freak circumstance indeed. And Glenn Howes, we mentioned uh, the young man who's having to be in there for Brett Miller and then Eric Sanders, the backup, got hurt uh, back spasms this week, just uh, made it impossible for him to go. So here's Glenn Howe. And knowing that he's going to have to deal with the likes of Andre Tippett much of this afternoon to protect David Archer, that time Tippett had just gotten by him, as you saw, it had finally pushed off and gotten free, and bing, uh, he winds up rolling out there over him. Now, you notice the twisting, the pulling back and forth of the leg. What the doctors are doing is checking to see if there's ligament damage. If it moves a lot, a lot then there's ligament damage. If it doesn't move a lot, then normally they'll say it's a strain or something, just a little stretch. Well, we'll get a report on Andre Tippett, who has nine and a half sacks and certainly uh, the key defensive performer for the Patriots because they'll move them all over the field bring them from all angles on the blitzes well you hate to see this Tim so many great players this year starting players have gone out because of injuries this young man's in a lot of pain and I hate to see it and I know that New England and Atlanta hates to see it Andre Tippett obviously very emotional for him sure he is. realizes it's something bad wrong yeah, and here's a team that wants to get back into the Super Bowl. They made it there last year against all the odds, wound up getting waxed by the Bears and want badly to show that uh, they can play better in a Super Bowl. And certainly Andre Tippett, the key guy, as I said, on, on this entire solid defense of the Patriots, best in the league. And here they lose a nine-and-a-half sacker, 51 tackles coming into the game. Defensive player of the year, 1985. Yeah, that's a real shame for Andre personally and for the Pats. There's Coach Ray Berry. He's got to just feel terrible about that. He has such a good relationship with his players on a personal level, and they call him a player's coach, and he's uh, he knows about this from his years of experience playing in the NFL, these kinds of things. So a distraught Andre Tippett assisted off the field, but his club's got to go on without him. And it is third down and 13 with the Falcons having the football. Time winding down first period. They are at their own 23-yard line. Archer gets it off. His receiver fell down. Charlie Brown to make it Stamps, the intended receiver. Sylvester Stamps fell down as he looked back for the ball. So Atlanta will have to punt for the first time this afternoon. David Archer. We'll have to rethink things here as we have a 3-3 football game. First sack of the afternoon occurred on the play in which Tippett was hurt. Aaron Barris getting it. Irving Pryor awaits the punt from Rick Donnelly standing downfield at the New England 37-yard line. Donnelly from his 15. Pryor at the 40. Dropped immediately at the 43-yard line by Brett Clark, number 28 for the Falcons. So pretty good field position for the New England Patriots. A 36-yard punt from Donnelly and a two-yard return. Next week on CBS Sports Saturday College Football Action, you'll see the Tar Heels of North Carolina and the Clemson Tigers, both teams in the midst of the ACC Clemson, championship. Clemson. What did I say? You said Clemson. You said Clemson. it right, but it's Clemson. <laughs> Okay, next Saturday on CBS Sports. You're right. I mean, I can't I've possibly. I've got to teach you how to talk. I know. I've got to talk that Southern when I'm doing Got to get ACC. that New York out of you. Get that <laughs> Carolina in you. First down for New England in good field position. Going deep. Eason. Off complete. Stanley Morgan with 42 catches. And seven touchdowns coming into the game. They Scott, try to get it all. Scott Case, 25, the right corner that was covering Morgan, went up. There's Case. He goes up, swings at the ball, misses the football, and it was just enough of a distraction to force Morgan to drop the ball and hit him right in the shoulder pads. Final seconds of the first quarter. 
The ball at the 44-yard line of New England. Tony Eason, in his fourth year out of the University of Illinois, that plays, as we've commented, and you've heard, no doubt, before, in a unique situation by the backup quarterback, Steve Grogan. And they go on the ground to Collins. Collins nowhere to go. There were three Falcons waiting out there, and Reggie Wilkes, all he had to do was pin him down. And that'll finish up the first quarter here with no gain on the play. And leave a third and ten when we return with the Atlanta Falcons and the Patriots tied at three all. And Terry Bradshaw at Sullivan Stadium. We have a three all tie just beginning the second period. And in that first four, ten minutes, 31 seconds. New England just 429, but they have only three points on the board. We saw the touchdown pass that was not a touchdown pass, and then we saw the missed wide field goal from Luckers after he hit the first one. And thus, despite having the ball most of the time, it's just a 3-3 game. And it is New England on third down. Eason up the middle, and it is incomplete. Got it behind Stanley Morgan. No chance for him to catch that one as he put the brakes on, but couldn't get his hands on the ball, and so New England will have to punt for the first time today. Brett Clark had the coverage. One of those zone defenses where everyone just dropping deep, and a thing that's a trademark of the New England Patriots, Tim, and all my years of playing against them, is they love to throw the 20 to 25 yard deep crossing routes, and that puts a lot of pressure on your line, but that time, good job. Easton just made a poor throw. Rich Camarillo, the punter, Floyd Dixon waiting for it. Rich Camarillo averaging 43.9 yards. Solid punter. And he gets a good one away. It's going to go out of bounds at the 12 yard line. A flag is thrown downfield. So we'll wait and see what that one is. They have spotted the ball out of bounds at the 15 of Atlanta. Gene Barth will consult with his officials as to the flag. 39 yarder from Camarillo into the win. Holding against the receiving team, a post possession foul. They'll keep the ball after the penalty enforcement. Gene Barth, again with a solid explanation of what occurred. And they'll mark it off from the 15 where the ball went out of bounds. Whoa, the Saints are marching in. Look at this 14 to 3 over the 49ers. Well, and in that West Division, you've got San Francisco at 5, 2, and 1 tied with Atlanta, and New Orleans at 3 and 5. Houston and Miami scoreless. And Pittsburgh. the Steelers, all uh, right. They're back to their glory days. <laughs> Cleveland rolling, playing well. Philadelphia, resurging Philadelphia. Giants leading Dallas, second quarter, 3 0. Danny White, a broken right wrist in that game, they're told. Ed Williams, number 54, is in Andre Tippett's spot as the Falcons have to start now from their seven yard line. A pump fake and a deep pass downfield. It oh. is incomplete, almost caught by Floyd Dixon. The little guy from Stephen Austin couldn't haul it in. The real secret to throwing a deep pass, or you know, a lot of people say guy has a strong arm, is not necessarily throwing it 60 yards in the air, Tim. The, the important thing is throwing it in the right spots. Get it there quicker. That time David waited and waited, and Dixon was open, got the ball there too late, floated, and he had to wait for it. And still in all, Dixon almost made a great catch, but James Britt, 26, knocked it out of his hands. Archer, five of eight, just 24 yards passing. And Middleton are in as two tight ends now on second and ten, and an aroused, sold out Sullivan Stadium crowd cheering on their defense. Oh, the defense does the job. My goodness, Gerald Riggs buried by Garen Barris. Second down, guessing pass. That time they blitz their linebackers and sit Nelson, 57, up inside. As you can see, 57's hurt too. That's Steve Nelson. Inside linebacker. And they've already lost Tippett from their front line of outstanding linebackers. And Nelson getting some assistance off. Well, you have Nelson if he goes out, and you have Williams coming in now in the place of Andre. I guess 
you may have to call on Larry McGrew, number 50, who is a, has a slightly sprained knee. He may have to come in now and play in the place of Nelson. Or Clayton Wysoon, perhaps, is back from an injury, and all of a sudden, here you've, you've got this outstanding core of linebackers, and you're looking at two starters leaving the game within a matter of minutes. And you can see Nelson, the real veteran here at age 35, 160 games. He's played for the Pats just behind the two players who retired at the end of last season, Julius Adams and John Hanna. A look on the training core of the Patriots. Third down and 11. A miscue on the play, and Archer just dives back near the line of scrimmage, and Atlanta will have to punt, so a couple of mistakes out there, and you see Archer talking to Sylvester Stamps, number 29. They've had a couple of mistakes indeed. When you're backed up like that, things, strange things happen. That's a terrible position for a quarterback that's been struggling to be in. They blitz you. You got a young guy in there, Sylvester Stamps. It goes the wrong way. All bad things starting to happen now to Atlanta. Donnelly has to punch standing just inside the end line. Oh, a dandy. Terrific punt by Donnelly. Backs up oh. Irving Fryer to his 36-yard line. And he has dropped at the 42. Still good field position for the Patriots, but what a job by Donnelly. Tim Green made the tackle, a 56-yard punt. We are early in the second period in tie. Tim Ryan, Terry Bradshaw at Sullivan Stadium under cloudy skies in Foxborough. We've got a three-all tie, kind of a strange game through the first period as Atlanta had the ball for 10 minutes, 31 seconds. They scored on their opening series a 41-yard field goal by Mick Luckers, kicking with a back spasm, picked up in the warm-up. They got the ball right back on an interception. Thought they had a touchdown. The ball was dropped in the end zone, stripped away as a touchdown call back after a replay, and then they missed on the field goal try. And New England has tied it at three. They have the football. First down on their own 42. Tony Collins picks up about two to the 45-yard line. Eason, the quarterback, is three of seven passing, 58 yards, one interception, ending a streak of 178. A flag down on this play. 66 offense, holding, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Paul Fairchild, left guard, guy that took Hog Hanna. Spot at left guard. Hmm. Well, that's certainly not going to set the uh, record books on fire, but hey, this is two fine defensive football teams and two offenses trying to figure them out. Well, you got the number one defense in the league, the part of the New England Patriots, and a very tough defense in Atlanta under Marion Campbell. Incomplete pass, a little pressure on Eason, got the ball off, just bounced it in front of a Falcon defender. A very confusing coverage that time. As a quarterback, I see exactly what Eason saw. I saw zone, which means there should be no man coverage on the backs coming out. So you ought to be able to get a screen off. That time he set it up beautifully. But what the what Marion Campbell had his linebackers do was engage the tight end and the backs, man for man. Therefore, Eason just had to throw the football away. So it leaves a second and 20 after that holding penalty on first down. Easy game. Huh. Well, easy I mean, for you. you played Pop Warner. You know how hard this is. 32-yard <laughs> line of the Patriots. And it's Collins trying to get wide to the short side. Flags everywhere. He picked up about four yards, perhaps, before he was driven out of bounds as the Falcons strung it out well. Scott Case with the hit. But flags came down before he even approached the sideline, and the holding another, signal is against New England. Another holding call. Holding 27 offense. 10 yard penalty, still second down. Greg Hawthorne tied in. That time, uh, Tim, Atlanta came in with 99. Tim Green, number one draft choice out of Syracuse, and he was hot in pursuit. It's a young man right here that's had a calf muscle problem early in training camp, signed late, and they say he is going to be an Andre Tippett. This guy can really put heat on a quarterback. And a smart guy. Yeah, Rhodes Scholar candidate, University of Syracuse. He and I were the two that were up for it, and uh, he barely beat me out. <laughs> Second down and long. 
to say the least, at the 22-yard line. Easton just going backwards here with those holding calls. Gets it off, but it is almost picked off as he was hit just as he released the football. And it was Mike Pitts putting the pressure on Easton. It gets up a little bit slowly. You can see what happens when a quarterback has someone in his face. You're going to see 74, Mike Pitts, and number 99 again, Tim Green. Green will get, his, get the pressure on. Pitts gets a hand on him, pulls him down to the ground. And then Green is in, I mean, Tim Green, number 99, comes in behind him. A definite ouch for Tony Eason. Pitts with three and a half sacks coming into the game for Atlanta, showing he can get into the backfield quickly. And he's in on these passing downs. Third down. Line of scrimmage, remember, way up at the 42-yard line. Eason trying to find an open man, scrambles well, and it's almost intercepted. Number 46, Herman, Herman Edwards, the former Philadelphia Eagles cornerback, joining his fellow former Eagles under Marion Campbell. The thing you're, I have to be impressed with is the quickness of the secondary that the Falcons. Now, this is a good job by Easton getting outside. Now, this is the thing he does extremely well. Throwing off balance, not able to get the velocity on the football, allowing Ed, Edwards 46 to make a break, and doggone near intercepted him. Camarillo standing at his own eight-yard line. Floyd Dixon is the deep man standing at the Atlanta 36. Long count for Camarillo. Ball hangs up a little bit. He's kicking into the wind. Taken at the 39. And Dixon nowhere to go. Good coverage by the Pats Hunt unit. Ed Reynolds, reserve linebacker, made the tackle at the 36-yard line. A 39-yard punt into the wind from Camarillo. We'll be back with the score tied at 3-all. Full credit has been given to Marion Campbell, hired by Dan Henning in the offseason to run the offense. He's got a three-year contract. That's longer than Henning's. And this Atlanta defense vastly improved with several players coming from the Eagles that Marion brought along with him when they became available. This is Riggs on first down. And we have seen that Atlanta defense very solid so far here in this first half again. Numerous opportunities, Tim, to make interceptions. Two drop interceptions for sure. One already by Brett Clark. The thing I notice now is that Atlanta is attacking the area that Andre Tippett has now gone to the sidelines. So are they going to the left side or the right side of Atlanta, or the left side of New England? At second round draft choice in 1984, Ed Williams from the University of Texas in that spot now, number 54 in Tippett's spot. Those are big shoes to fill. Second and a yard, Atlanta. At the 44 yard line. Gerald Riggs again has a good hole running behind Glenn Howe and Bill Fralick. Johnny Rembert made the tackle. Remember Rembert in there for Lawrence McGrew, who was uh, the starter and is out with a, a knee injury. Steve Nelson left the game but came back. He's playing in there. So with uh, Tippett and McGrew out, you've got two starters out from that fine group of linebackers. And you've got Steve Nelson playing a little bit hurt. It is first down Atlanta. You can see that the defenses have dominated, to say the least. Penalties, of course, affecting New England on their last series. Two holding calls backing them up. First down at midfield. Riggs trying to pick his way, gets loose from one man, and with a lot of effort gets about four yards on the play. <laughs> Looked like he had nowhere to go, Terry. Strong, strong, strong. Trying to pick his hold. A little misdirection off to the left side, but a, it was a deliberate cutback play. Freilich that time, the right guard, just turned outside and sealed off the, the entire left side of the defense, allowing Riggs up inside of him. Gerald Riggs, 44 yards on 11 carries. A flag down that we didn't see in all of that traffic around the ball. It's against Atlanta. And backs him up five. It'll be first and 15 at the 46-yard line. You can see Coach Henning asking, what play did you just send in? David Archer, feeling some pressure from the fans and the media after getting out to such a good start this season, struggling in the last three or four games. Play-action pass. Pressure. 
incomplete in the general direction of Arthur Cox. It'll leave second and 15. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for a look at that Dallas. Well, Tim, because of the injury to Danny White, broken wrist, Steve Pilar will be the Cowboy quarterback. First touchdown pitch this year to Mike Renfro. The Cowboys lead the Giants 7-3. Back to Tim. All right, Brent. You heard uh, Danny White going down with a broken right wrist and to lure the man again. Key battle in the NFC East, the Giants and the Cowboys and New York fans certainly hoping that uh, the Giants can revenge, gain, gain revenge for that tough loss early against Dallas. Second down here in Sullivan Stadium. Second and 15, Archer up the middle and it's complete to Arthur Cox. First down and dragging oh. tacklers to the 26-yard line what a of New England. Fred Marion, free safety, just grand down said, giddy up, horsey. 262-pounder. Cox, the tight end, a 28-yard gain. Offensive line that time, Howell and Freilich are right side. Excellent job of protecting, giving Archer time, because this is a long pass, and you need time. Look at the nice pocket. And then Cox gets right in behind the, in behind the linebacker in front of the safety, and a good job by Archer of just dropping it in there. Look at this. Got four guys hanging on him, and he's dragging them. Hook him up to a plow. Arthur Cox, Texas Southern. First down, Atlanta. Rakes turned inside and fine defensive pursuit by the Patriots out the right side, led by Don Blackman. He's so quick over the line of scrimmage, number 55, like Tippett when he's in there on the other side, that you know, you just don't get a chance to go outside. Riggs having to turn it up and people waiting there for him. Well, you, Riggs' game is not outside. That's not his game, Tim. And, and if you can't hook Blackman, meaning you can't force him inside and allow Riggs outside, then Blackman's going to get outside. And you, there's no way you can do it. Riggs is going to have to stay inside of, of him and the ends and run up that way. Looks like they not only tried to hook him, they tried to unhook his shoulder pads on the last play there. Second and 11. Riggs will try the middle, and he's got some room. To the 16-yard line of New England, and a first down Atlanta, Steve Nelson having to range back, number 57, to make the stop. Freilich, 79, right guard, and Howe, 71, tackle, and Ratloff to center the key people this time on the left of your screens. They drive, they look at it, just caving the people down inside. A good kick out blocked by the left guard, Sully, on Williams, and then Riggs doing a fine job of cutting inside. Well, it's short of the first down by about, uh, oh, a half yard at the most. It appeared that he had gained the yards, but the spot leaving him a bit short, and Atlanta takes a timeout. We have 8.21 remaining in the first half of play here at Sullivan Stadium. With uh, tip it out, the thing that has happened now is New England has gotten away completely from blitzing, allowing Atlanta now to go in and zone block, which means just big guy on big guy and allowing Riggs to pick his holes and doing a good job. Henning now has the type of offense he had the first four games, running the football with Riggs, pounding on the defensive line, play actions, and then Archer making the crucial throws and making the things happen. This is the offense they've, they've been looking for for four weeks, and so far in the first half today, Tim, him, they found it. Well, Terry, in your opening comments, uh, you made that point that in order for Archer to be effective and, and his needing to be effective to get his confidence back, they had to be able to get the running game in gear. And that was uh, Henning's intention. And uh, so far, you're saying they're right on target. Right, exactly. This young man, Archer, he's too young to carry a football team. He's just a baby. He's only started 12, 13 games. And he's got a lot of learning to do. And there's been too much pressure placed on him. And Henning said yesterday, too much glory for the quarterback, too much blame for the quarterback. And he said, this kid's just a baby. So it is third down, about a half yard to go. The ball is just outside the 16-yard line. Riggs the lone setback. Juan Middleton lines up on the wing left, the second tight end. And Riggs has the first down. Met over the 15-yard line. So the Falcons with a great opportunity here at three all. They'll have a first down inside the 15 of New England. Fred Marion made the tackle, number 31. Marion with 55 tackles coming into the game, the leading tackler on the pass. The last time the Falcons had the ball inside the 20-yard line on first down, they did a rollout bootleg throwing back across the middle to Cox. They did this to avoid the blitz and get Archer time. Let's see now if they do a play action and once again try to throw the football and score. 
Rose is not in motion. Rinks. Stopped at the five-yard line. Had good blocking. Led by Wisenhunt. Even Charlie Brown, the wide receiver, involved in the blocking out the right side. And let's see how they spot that ball. They're going to be close again to a first down and short by about a half a yard. So second and a half yard to go for a first down. And they're at the five-yard line of New England. Nelson and Roland James combining to stop him. The strong side of your rushing attack is always your right tackle, guard, and tight end. The strong side or your power side on your defense is always the left side. This time we're seeing power versus power. Middleton, wing left. He's the motion man. Breaks again. Breaks. Touchdown. Touchdown. Gerald Rinks powers his way in. And the Atlanta Falcons have regained the lead. They led early in the first quarter on a Luckers field goal and have gone on top once more. Notice the right guard, number 79, in the center of your screen. Right off the football, inside, shoving, fighting, pushing. Brent Williams just drives him completely back, allowing Riggs to get up inside, and he, too, having a good power drive, gets it into the end zone. And That's there's a big, the man. That is a big man. Here's Many saying impressive. now, Tim, he's one of the best guards in the National Football League, and this is only his second year. Well, and I think a, a good thing uh, for Bill Frelick, who's a quality person, has uh, come out recently, uh, I think for the second time, uh, for uh, against the use of steroids and a real uh, serious concern on his part. He acknowledged that he had had uh, used steroids at some point during his college career and uh, has learned that uh, putting that stuff in your system is bad news. We've got a, another uh, conference going down there with Gene Barth and company and they're evidently talking to the replay officials and uh, it had to be out again on a touchdown play. So let's see whether or not Riggs uh, got in was a knee down or what have you. Well, once again, you'll see Frelick. After a review of instant replay, it was not a touchdown. The ball should be spotted on the one foot line. There's Riggs and oh, you can see both knees are down at the one yard line. Yeah. So I've got to say once again that this is a good call. If you notice that the action when it takes place, you can't see these things. But folks, we have the luxury of running 20 plays back and you can look at it and clearly see that that's a good call. He didn't get in. Dan Henning saying hey, deja vu is what he's saying. How many times do I have to get it in the end zone here? But he either got it in or he didn't. The officials say first he didn't. First and goal from the one foot line. First and goal. He did get a first down. So it'll be first and goal from the one foot line. He's got to be thinking what in the world is going to happen to me next. Well, frustrating. I mean, you got to feel for this guy. You got to understand the frustration that he's going through right now. Said, "Good gosh, I'm out here. Three to three. We get it in again. Now we're back on the one foot, the one foot line." Touchdown for Riggs. No question about that one. He could have run into row ten back there. They had a huge hole again behind Freilich. And Glenn Howe, who has to be a story here. There's Dan Henning coming back off the field. He had walked right out there, I'm sure, to just make sure that the guy had got into the end zone with well, the football. I think what the officials have done is make this entire Atlanta offensive line mad. Look at Freilich moving, coming outside, just getting inside. No one there to block. He's looking for someone and just nails 57 that time. Steve Nelson knocks him flat on his back. Luckers will attempt to point after. got it. So the Atlanta Falcons have now opened a 10 to 3 lead. We have 629 still to play in the first half at Sullivan Stadium. We are back at Sullivan Stadium and uh, the Atlanta Falcons have been uh, what they thought in the end zone a couple of times <laughs> had to do it over again. They made sure there is Riggs. I mean he had a hole he could drive a truck through and as you said I think that uh, Braylick and company were just so hot at the uh, the first one being called back. Those are the things that can happen. You can act, you know, you can make a team mad. And this is a young football team. I don't think you would want to make mad. And the point I made at the beginning of the telecast was this is a football team in the second half doesn't give up a lot of points right now. They may have enough to win the football game. Well, and that uh, for New England, you know, the number one defense in the NFL, the first touchdown scored against them in 10 quarters. 
So uh, obviously the Falcons have to feel good about what they've accomplished, and especially since they had two of them call back. So Luckers, who's been kicking in pain, uh, again will uh, take time off from the kickoff duties and let Rick Donnelly do it. Normally uh, just the punter, but with college placement kicking experience, he'll kick it off again. The deep man Stephen Starring. And he is backed up on a good kickoff behind the goal line. Brings it from a yard deep. Stephen Starring over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Stopped there by David Crudup. And Starring leading the AFC in kickoff returns. Almost 25 yards on the average. So he's a dangerous guy, number 81. Tony Eason will bring out the Patriots and you can see what uh, New England has been doing by quarters over this season. Now they have uh, been a, a solid team in the second period with 71 points, as you can see. But pretty balanced overall. Decent on first down. As his man, Tony Collins, out of the backfield. And Ray Berry uh, says that uh, Collins is, first of all, a, a complete back happy with his ability to do everything you ask of him but he says he's a receiver first he had 52 catches to lead the Pats last year a blocker second and a runner third in this offense of the Patriots they had nine catches against Denver in that game early this year but they haven't really gone to the backs so far but they haven't had the ball very much in this first half second and six Short side, a flag is down. He got a yard, maybe two, before he was met by Rick Bryan, number 77, third-year man from Oklahoma. A flag was down, downfield. And the holding call goes against New England. Penalties, and particularly holding penalties, continuing to plague the Patriots. 67 offense, holding. 10 yard penalty, still second down. That's Steve Moore. Look at the size of that argument. Whoa. Whoops. Steve Moore also used some heavy Steve, weight. Better language not do in that. that. Better not do <laughs> that. That's my conduct. Number 67 offense. Unsportsmanlike and a uh, little conversation from a 315 pounder. Cost him some more yardage. That guy in that striped shirt may weigh 140 pounds, but he can whoop this guy all day long by chucking that yellow flag. <laughs> so you better be quiet. But, you know, I think what's interesting, harkening back to conversation with Craig James yesterday in the, in the Patriots uh, locker room at practice, that what's really different this year is when you lose a guy like John Hanna, it's not just that he's a great player at offensive guard, but you're losing that intensity, the leadership, the kind of guy who can say, hey, That's guys, right. let's keep our act together. They say that that he was the guy that kept them together, and right now they don't have a leader on that offensive line to keep that intensity up. So it is second down now back at the seven-yard line. They make the draw, and Easton from the end zone gets it out to James and just overthrows him a flag down in the end zone. Oh, James had a lot of running room out there, Terry, but the ball just off his fingertips wouldn't have mattered. Another Flying holding. against New England. Raymond Berry... Not pleased with his team going backwards. Holding 51 offense, penalty refused, third down. Ron Wooten charged this time with holding. Falcons say they're just about in the end zone. We'll just call that one off, give them third down. The mm -hmm. only thing New England can do right now or go by the old saying, all sickness is not death. These things are not going to continue. They can't or they're going to lose this football game. They've got to make something positive happen now. Gosh, you're looking at uh, third and 23. It's awfully hard to make up that kind of yardage, especially against a good defense. And from their seven-yard line, so they go to the shotgun. They've got four receivers out there for reason. Goes to the short man. It's complete. Hawthorne gets up and picks up about another five yards. Gets back near the 23-yard line. Hawthorne was a running back in Pittsburgh. I liked him. I liked him having him in the backfield. We threw to him a lot out of the backfield. And I used to always tell Chuck, Chuck, I really think Greg Hawthorne would make a great tight end. Big, fast, strong, great, great attitude. But Chuck never did like that. He wanted to keep him at running back. And eventually he traded him to New England. Raymond Berry said, hey, Hawthorne, you look like a tight end. Made him a tight end. Now he loves him. Yeah, yeah they're very pleased with his progress. Replacing Lynn Dawson. Uh, still hasn't recovered from that knee injury suffered in the Super Bowl. And Hawthorne is going to be the man for the season. Amarillo 
Just got it away. Pretty good pressure by the Falcons, and he gets a New England bounce. Taken by Dixon, hit immediately. Rod McSwain with the open field tackle on Floyd Dixon. And the crowd enjoyed that, a 41-yarder. So Atlanta with the football, 4.50 to play in the first half, and they have it at the 36-yard line. New Orleans still leading San Francisco, and we'll be watching that one for Atlanta fans. In Miami in front of Houston. And the mighty Steelers rolling along. Eagles, a tough defense under Buddy Ryan. Shutting down people, and look at this. The Giants in Dallas, they're locked in the defensive battle. New York on top. Keep you up to date on that one. First down from the 36-yard line. Riggs, nowhere to go. Solid defensive play by the Patriots out the left side. Johnny Rembert and Roland James. 38, Roland James, a strong safety. He's the one defensive back that New England asked to support. Come up and stop the run. Coming inside, good head, just got square to the runner and then drove him down and made the tackle. Tennessee. He feels they've got one of the best secondaries in the league. Puts them in the category of Raiders, Chiefs, Cardinals. All recognize the good one. Second and 11. On the draw on is Riggs, and Riggs breaks a tackle and has the first down and then some. What a load that man is when he gets a little acceleration going. A flag down after the play was over. Gerald Riggs for an Atlanta first down in New England territory. 16 yards. We have offsetting personal fouls after the ball was dead. 88 offense, 67 defense. The penalty's offset and the down counts. It's a first down. Well, that's Arthur Cox and Steve Nelson having a little set to there that uh, didn't last too long. And New England getting back to the blitz that time, thinking they are going to pass. Blitz sent out both linebackers outside, stunted their tackles inside. An excellent job once again by the Atlanta Falcons offensive line of taking the stunts, moving them outside, Tim, and allowing a huge hole for Riggs to run in. And allowing him to roll up 82 yards and 18 carries. Remember, just 43 for the entire game against the Rams last week. And this time it's William Andrews getting the call. His first carry of the day and got about a yard. I think one of the mistakes Atlanta could make right now is the fact that they're having success running the football. But don't forget that they've had success throwing the football. And who's to say that the passing that Archer's done in this first half has not made the running game go. So I think it'd be a big mistake if they rely strictly on their running attack now. If they do, then they'll, they'll have no offense. They've got a slot left here. Boyd Dixon in motion out of the slot. And again, they go to the run. No, it's going to be Archer the other way. Dave and Archer to the 30-yard line. A naked reverse. He made a real good fake and showed why he has already got 269 yards rushing coming into this game. He picks up 16 more. Dan Henning told us the thing he likes about Archer is that he is an improviser. That means that he'll take something and create something out of the ordinary. This is not a design play. Archer knew that they were going to close down with their outside linebacker. He saw that and he kept it. Excellent job. So it's first down at the 30-yard line of New England. Kenneth Sims comes in defensively. For the rookie Brent Williams at left end. Sims, the number one pick back in 82. They've been easing him back into the lineup following his injury to his back. Flags down, whistles everywhere, and that one will start over again back at the 30. Some That's a shame action. there. One of the few traps. Ball start, offense number 79. Five yard penalty, still first down. Freilich, an outstanding drive blocker that time, pulling to his left to trap, trapping the end, kicking out the end, just jumped a little too soon. So it'll be first and 15, and I guess you have to give some credit to young Glenn Howe, the second year man from Southern Mississippi, so far holding his own alongside Freilich at right tackle. He's the third 
right tackle on that side behind uh, Brett Miller, the starters on injured reserve, and Sanders, who's also hurt. And apart from that one play on which Tippett was hurt, and that time Hal beaten on the play, he's really been doing a fine job over there. Had to be a source of some concern for Atlanta coming into the game. This is Riggs. He wants to throw, and it is a oh, diving try by Dixon. Can't quite get his hands on it. Floyd Dixon stretched it out there, giving Riggs every chance to be a hero if he could have made a big catch, but he could not hold on to the ball. Well, we're seeing it all today. I like that play. Also, I like the fact that it's speed versus speed. Speed, 42, LaPet against Dixon, number 86. On the bottom. Now, he's going to come inside like he's going to block the safety. Now, he turns back out to the corner. Now, Marion has to pick him up. LaPet has to pick him up. Now, he's got his man beaten. Ooh, almost a great catch. Just got the fingertips of the speedy Floyd Dixon. Second and 15. He's in motion again. Riggs hold down behind the line of scrimmage by Rimbert, a linebacker number 52, playing for the injured Lawrence McGrew. And Rimbert, who had a big intercept against Buffalo last week, lateraled off to Tippett. One of the big plays of the game for New England comes up big here. On the right side of your screen, you're going to notice how everyone stays back. The linebackers outside did not pursue as they've been doing early in the game because of Archer's ability to run and scramble while ago. Now they're staying home, Tim. It's going to allow them to run those sweeps to the right side. Third down. And about 16 to go at the 36-yard line. Approaching the two-minute warning. And we'll have it now. So a tight defensive struggle continues into the final minutes of the first half. Atlanta leading the Patriots at home, 10 to 3. Tim Ryan with Terry Bradshaw. Two minutes to play here. You can see kind of a, a sultry gray day in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It was absolutely perfect fall weather up here the past couple of days, but in came the clouds. It's just been kind of hanging there. We've had no moisture yet, but the lights have been on since the opening kickoff. And the game somehow has had that kind of gray cloudy look to it as well. In Atlanta, 20 minutes and 58 seconds they've had the football. They've got 10 points to show for it. Third down and 15. Archer has time, but it's incomplete. Intended for Joey Jones, number 84. There was confusion that time in the secondary. Lapet number 42, in the, in the right of your screen, folks. Now, he's pointing, telling everyone, pick him up, pick him up. I'm coming, I'm coming. Now, he goes up to engage, but his back is coming out. Look at this. Nice job of blocking Lapet. Archer's out wide. So Luckers will try his third field goal of the day. He's got one. He missed from 32. And this one he will be trying from the 44-yard line. A 54-yard try is blocked. The ball loose recovered by Atlanta. Don Blackman got the hand on it. And the Patriots fans love it. crowd at Sullivan Stadium enjoying that one. They've got good field position at the 45. It was good pressure up the middle. Luckhurst with the bad back and all does not get this football up very high. Good pressure by the defensive line. Pushed the offensive line back into the kick. Now I question whether or not maybe they should have punted this football. Leading 10 to 3. Why not put punt for the angle make them go 80, 85 yards? Well, that's a good question right now, Terry. Because you've got a kicker that's hurt. <laughs> that's right. No, I, I'm just saying, I like that. I like the fact you're questioning it right now after it happened. Well, <laughs> they got field position at the 45. That was a tough call on your part. He should. we got a man open, and it is Stanley Morgan to the 30. Up offense, two plays are called, setting the team, giving the snap count. 21 yard gain, and the Patriots with a chance to tie things up. Collins. Oh, that Back comes down. a flag. Collins out of the 25 yard line of Atlanta, but a flag on the play. Herman Edwards drove him out. Clock stopped at 122 to play first. 
Holding. 27 offense, holding. 10 yard penalty, will we play the first down? Greg Hawthorne, the tight end. Jerry, a lot of fans wonder why he still wears that number. Well, when you're a vested player in the National Football League and you're moved to another position, you don't have to change numbers. He came in out of college. He wore 27 his entire uh, NFL career as a running back. They moved him to tight end, which is an 80 number. But since he already had 27, he was a vested player. He was allowed to keep the number. Don't forget at halftime, we'll be going to the NFL today. Brent Irvin will with scores and highlights. And a special feature to be successful in Hollywood, you have not to cast your stars, but the L.A. Rams have had a hard time finding their own leading man. That story is coming up at halftime in the NFL today. You know, one of the other problems that they have with New England is that outside of the fact that Greg Hawthorne has a 27 and he's a vested player, do you know that New England has no more 80 numbers to give out? They're fresh out of 80 numbers. Maybe you go to the 90s, huh? Could be. Old Greg's going to keep that 27, and his coach thinks he's going to be a fine tight end. But the penalty drops Atlanta back. They're in the shotgun. At the 43-yard line of Atlanta. Eason going deep for Fryer, and oh. it is almost picked up by Brett Clark. Clark, who has one interception and has had two more good opportunities, couldn't squeeze that one, but he broke up the play. Just a great move. I tell you, these defensive backs have great bursts for the football. Defensive backs are supposed to have the burst. They're also the reason they're defensive backs is because they don't have the ability to catch the football or else they would be wide receivers. Now, there's a good example there. Clark moving in for the interception. He's got one already today. Hands on it. That's the third one today. The defensive backs for Atlanta have dropped him. They made a deal for young Brett Clark with the Raiders. He's been in the USFL, and Atlanta really wanted him, and they got him, and he's been doing the job. Second and long, some pressure on Eason. Good movement by Eason, and it is cut. Beatty, the backup tight end, gets down to the 27-yard line and out of bounds, most importantly, 106 to play. One of the things we're seeing on behalf of both quarterbacks is the great ability to get out of trouble. Quarterbacks nowadays, a guy like Marino, a guy like Plunkett, can't move around. They sit there, easy targets. Eason that time, good ability, escaped the rush, made a big play. Timeout on the field, and we'll be back with Atlanta leading, but New England driving. Well, a timeout called by the Patriots. I thought Beatty had gotten out of bounds, but he had not. Greg Beatty, the rookie tight end from Stanford, so they had to take the timeout. 106 to play, and they have uh, two remaining, two timeouts remaining. The ball is third down and a long three at the 27-yard line of Atlanta. <laughs> Patriots trying to get in that locker room tied up. Eason from the shotgun has time, has his man. First down, New England. At the 22-yard line, Stanley Morgan. If Collins had just pumped this football instead of hitting Morgan with it, Tony Collins was wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. Eason again with time. A flag down on the play. It's incomplete. Stephen Starring, the intended receiver. Eason did not get the ball to him. Starring tried to come back for it, but a flag was down anyway. There's a strong wind blowing from that corner right into Eason's face, Tim, and you have to really zing that football out there. If you lay it up like that, the wind will literally drive it into the ground, and that's exactly what happened on that play. Good point, Terry. You can see the flags in that corner, and they are they're just literally in the angle of where he threw that ball. Illegal motion, number 67. He moved before the snap. Five yards penalty, still first down. So Steve see, Moore, I think this time he probably keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> left side, you can see left tackle Steve Moore. There's the movement right there. You can't do that. Once you establish yourself, you cannot move. So first and 15, the Patriots. 39 seconds on the clock. Eason deep. Touchdown. Tony Collins.
football, but the thing that's so unique about this is that the defensive back never sees it. And as you can see, Eason outside throwing on the run, throws it right by the linebacker. Look at that, right in behind the linebacker, number 54, Joel Williams. Williams was called for interference on the play, naturally declined, the touchdown stands, and here's the opportunity to tie. Tony Franklin will barefoot it. Block, block. Well, what a turn of events. With 32 seconds still to play in the first half, kind of a high snap. He's in a little difficulty getting it down, but I think even if it had been a good snap, a snap it looked like uh, they had really had poured through the middle there. You can see right up the middle they come. The pressure by the defensive line. Look at him going right up over the top of the left guard. 74, good job that time by number 74. Pitts and Pitts. Dennis Harrison led the charge. They did a good job. Boy, they just climbed all over those guys. Well, you know what happened? The line got down and buried their heads like little, little uh, what do you call them, ostriches. And so they just said, well, if he's going to bury his head, I'll just hop over his back. And that's exactly what they did. Well, Tony Eason got the job done with the 26-yard touchdown pass to Tony Collins right on the money, deep in the end zone. But the field goal, the uh, point after, blocked. And so we have a one-point game with Atlanta leading New England. I'm not sure anybody, despite the fact they had good defense, has expected a 10-9 game at this stage. Well, I know Franklin didn't because that's the first block he's had since joining the New England Patriots, so he's probably the one that's most shocked of anyone. Tony Franklin leading the league with 75 points and was 24 of 24 on that now, point after Now, five. I guess that field goal attempt was a good call on my part, huh? <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> they just took advantage of it and went the distance, but come up a point short. Franklin will kick it off. 32 seconds left. What do you do here, Bradshaw, when you get the football? Try well, I better something. say it now before they actually do it. That's right. You hit, yeah. a, you hit a little. It's 32 seconds. I think you got to kick away. If you hit a squibber here and it gets to the 30-yard line, they could pick it up, move it to the 42 passes, and then Atlanta would have a chance for a field goal. So let's say they kick it away. Okay. He does. It's going to be short nonetheless. Comes down, but takes a bounce for the Patriots and goes out of bounds. They'll have to do it over again. Flip Austin, the deep man, watching that one slice out of bounds near the 10-yard line. I think the Pats saying that a Falcon touched him. I don't believe so. Illegal procedure, a five-yard penalty, a kickoff out of bounds. So they'll back it up. And Franklin, uh, he's standing back there. He knows he's going to have to do it again. He's already got his tee up there at the 30-yard line. You know, he lost some weight. You know, he was having those problems kicking. He got his weight down to 172 pounds back to his college days and uh, swinging that leg a lot better, a little lighter on your feet, makes a little lighter in your leg and can really drive that ball down there. You know, he has a, a long of 47 uh, yards this year, but uh, he's missed recently three from 42, 45, and 47, and the little things that go on in these kickers. He noticed that he was lining up a little bit too deep, so he was kind of reaching for the ball with his kicking leg, so they corrected that, saw it in the films, and worked on it, and he says he's been booming them well in practice, hasn't had an opportunity for a long one since those misses, but on the season, he's 17 of 23. Been a solid performer since coming from the Eagles. Not a big fan of Dick Vermeil's, and I don't mean as a, an analyst for CBS Sports. I, Tony uh, was not exactly enamored of Coach Vermeil when Dick Vermeil was at Philadelphia. Happy here under Ray Berry. Another short kickoff taken at the 20-yard line. Biff Austin. Austin gets close to the 40-yard line, and we have 26 seconds to play. Now what do you do, quarterback? Well, you've got 26 seconds left, time for three for three passes. You need to get the ball to about the 30-yard line now, and we understand Luckhorst has a bad back. He's had one field goal attempt blocked already. So I would look for them to try to move this football down, throwing passes, and try to get it inside the 30-yard line to set up a field goal attempt. Ball spotted at the 39-yard line. First down, Atlanta. Charlie Brown in motion. Jack stamps in the backfield. They swing it out to him on a screen. Get out of bounds. 
Stamps held inbounds at the 48-yard line. Good defensive work by the Patriots, stripping the blocking in front of Stamps. Timeout call by the Falcons. They have one remaining with 14 seconds to play first half. When you're in the huddle and you have a screen pass call as, the, as Atlanta did then, what you tell your back is, look, get as much as you can get, then get out of bounds, save the precious seconds on that clock, and then get up, go ahead, you have your second play call, you don't have to huddle again, and then get up and run another play, or line up again, call two more plays, and then attack them. But now you let it, there was seven seconds that just ticked off the clock while they made their decision to call a timeout, and all the back had to do was get out of bounds. Val Archer having conferred with Dan Henning, Bob Harrison on the sidelines. Back uh, ready to go here. With the ball now at the 49-yard line in Atlanta territory. 14 seconds to play. Falcons have had possession most of this first half. But if you joined us along the line, they scored on their first drive a field goal, picked off an intercept, went in, got what they thought was a touchdown, but was stripped away in the end zone from the tight end Arthur Cox, and then missed on the second field goal try. Play action. Deep sideline oh. incomplete. In and out of the hands of Charlie Brown. Brown knew he was right at the sideline. The ball was probably already out of bounds. You could see him trying to just keep himself in, and uh, by doing so, he couldn't reach the ball. One of those double layer passes where you bring a receiver underneath to hold the corner and then take a receiver like Brown and run him out beyond, beyond that corner and in between the safety, then try to drop the ball in. Wasn't quite enough room that time for Archer to get it to Brown. Also, if you join us along the way, Andre Tippett left with a knee injury. We're awaiting a more full report. They were taking x-rays. We heard nothing more since that time, but uh, the big man of the pass defense out of the game. At the left side for Stamps, blockers in front, and Stamps can turn it loose, and he does. Bounces off one tackler, but again in the middle of the field, and time expires. So we'll go to the locker rooms at halftime here in Sullivan Stadium. Ray Berry and Dan Henning, the coaches, with a one-point margin, and it is... The Atlanta Falcons having that 10-9 lead with the locked point after the difference in the game. And Ray Berry with some question marks for the officials. Referee Gene Barth. And at halftime at Sullivan Stadium, the score stands. Atlanta 10, New England 9. Welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger along with Will McDonough and Irv Cross. Tough game just as we anticipated. Hard to believe that the Falcons would have two touchdowns called back because of instant replay. The first time they miss a field goal and the second time they zip into the end zone for the score after that initial one was called back. However, in both cases it appears as though the officials were right. But there was a controversial play involving Andre Tippett here. He is out with a sprained left knee and Will McDonough, my question to you is that leg whip. How dirty was that play? Well, my answer to you is he got it before the leg whip. It looked to me like his knee gave out two steps before he could hit. It looked like he stuck it in the turf and all his weight was on top of it, and boom, it just blew out of there. All right, and so it's a one-point game and a great second half coming up in that one. Now, San Francisco and New Orleans, a couple of storylines here. Number one for the Saints, they have an emerging star running back in Reuben Mays, with Joe Montana and Ronnie Lott watching in civilian clothes. I want you to watch Mays here. He'll reverse his field, come back, and go 27 yards, Irv. Really a nifty run here, but he picked up a good block from his quarterback here. Boom, there he goes. And, of course, Mays does the rest, rambling into the end zone. Bill Walsh says, where are those guys in civilian clothes? I could use them. But then Jim Fonhorst gives him the turnover break that he needed. So often, this defense of San Francisco has really turned into big play this year. Jim Fonhorst, his third interception, he returned at 45 yards. That set up the score, and now the Niners are right back in it. And, Will, what about Joe Montana? When is he coming back? Brent, I think what happens to Joe Montana is going to be dictated by the second half of this game. If they win, the pressure won't be there to rush him. If they lose, it will be there to bring him back quickly. Well, it's a good game because the Saints are an improved football team, four points at the half. Buffalo and Tampa Bay, the Bills ran a reverse on a kickoff, fumbled the ball, the Bucks recovered it for a touchdown. Miami, three touchdown passes by Dan Marino, 20 for the season. They're all over the Oilers, 21 to nothing. Pittsburgh beating Green Bay at the half. They are 13-3. Cincinnati tied for first in the AFC 
Central leads the Lions by a field goal. And the Cleveland Browns have three touchdown passes from Bernie Kosar today, 14, 72, and eight yards. They're running it up on the Colts. Philadelphia and St. Louis, it is 7-0. The Eagles with the lead. They've gone to the second half. Dallas and the Giants. It's 10-7. Giants with the lead. The Cowboys have lost Danny White probably for the season because of a broken wrist. And watch some of the action from this game. As Phil Simms throws one up in the air, never hit the rug. That's an interception. How do you like that play right there? And Bill Parcell says, not very much. I'd like to try a different one. Now, Danny White was the target, and here comes Gary Reasons, and this is what put White out of. No doubt about it. Of course, the Giants wanted to put pressure on him. On that play, he suffered a fractured right wrist. So Steve Pillar steps in, has to pick up the slack, and right away he went to a man who had not caught a scoring pass. He'd been on that injured reserve list. Coming back, Mike Renfro, and the Cowboys were ahead. Or what about Joe Morris? You know, you can say nothing but superlatives about him. <laughs> Touchdown run, 18 carries, 125 yards in the first half. Not bad. Going to be a great second half in that one, too. 10-7, the NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. at halftime to reflect on the Los Angeles Rams. Again, they are on their way to another winning season, and once again, they are doing it the hard way without a star quarterback. Now, that's a recurring problem, one that has plagued the Rams recently, but as Gary Paul Gates now tells us, it didn't start out that way. When the Rams moved from Cleveland to L.A. in 1946, they were the defending NFL champions, and their team leader was a champion quarterback. Bob Waterfield came to L.A. a proven winner and quickly adapted to the local lifestyle. He and Jane Russell became a Hollywood fun couple, and he was followed by other winners, Norm Van Brocklin in the 50s and Roman Gabriel in the 60s. But ever since the end of the Roman era, it's been the dark ages for Ram quarterbacks. Visitors of this historic shrine, this vast coliseum where the Ram gladiators used to perform, can almost hear the echoes of broken dreams at that glamour position. They've had this, you know, this goofy history of quarterbacks all, all the way down the line. The star names they lured from other teams were past their prime. For Burt Jones, Dan Pastorini, and Joe Namath, the Rams were the last stop on their way to a life after football. Then there was Pat Hayden, talented but judged to be too short for the job. And even in the land of illusion, you can't play the game in elevator cleats. Next came Vince Ferragamo, who led the Rams to the Super Bowl and was brazen enough to expect more money for that. The team said no, and Vince chose exile in Canada. That set up a balance of trade move, as the Rams imported Dieter Brock, who, despite his years in the cold winds of Canada, couldn't cope with a routine winter day in Chicago. And just last week, with the situation again in chaos, the Rams turned to a clutch performer from another position. Have you become the answer to the Rams quarterback problem? I don't think so. A lot of people have been asking me that now. My mother said, maybe you should just play quarterback. If they won't listen to Eric's mother, then maybe the Rams should take their cue from their Hollywood neighbors, who created the star system. In movies about football, the quarterbacks always seem to win. My recommendation would be if the Rams signed with the William Morris Agency. This way, one of the William Morris executives could be on the coaching staff and help cast the quarterback for that particular Sunday. Mary, what would you think of a studio or a director who would make a movie without a star or leading man? Gosh. It is hard to imagine. I mean, first of all, uh, I have to think what would have happened to Scarlett if there had been no Rhett to say, well, frankly, I don't give a damn. But don't get the wrong impression. Ram owner Georgia Frontieri does give a damn, and she expects her leading men to at least look the part. Georgia likes her quarterbacks tall and handsome. Most teams just like them tall. Tall and handsome aptly describes a bright new hope for the future. When the Rams announced they had acquired Jim Everett, the move won the instant approval of one member of the Hollywood community. I think this is a good choice, aside from the fact that I love his name, and he sounds like a leader, has all those things, has star value, etc. Uh, I, I think that if they hang on to this fellow and stick with him, I think uh, uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. Maybe the quarterback problem will be, be solved a little bit. We were told that when some local fans heard the news, they assumed the new Ram quarterback wasn't Jim, but Chad, the Everett they knew from primetime television. Is this kind of mistaken identity possible? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, after all, this is Hollywood. Reporting from Tinseltown, I'm Gary Paul Gates. Hey, well, can you imagine anybody in Chicago asking a press agent about the Bear quarterback? Yeah. When is Everett going to play for the Rams? Well, it's Hollywood, you know, in uh, show business. Everything is timing, and it's not his time yet. He's not ready to play. All right, let's send you back to the stadium now in the game you're enjoying on CBS. Presenting the check on the Canadian...
We are back at Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. The Atlanta Falcons leading the Patriots in a defensive battle 10-9. to CBS Sports coverage of NFL football continues after this message and a word from your local station. Sullivan Stadium and in that second period Terry we saw David Archer run a, a naked reverse and you told me that Andrews didn't even know that that right. was what was going to happen. Here's what, hap it. Here's what happened Tim. Dixon goes in motion. The corner runs with him. The safety they're in man coverage so they run these guys off. Well there's no one back. Now Blackman 55's coming down flat. He's chasing. Barris is flat. He's chasing. They got all these guys in man coverage. Now here comes Riggs this way. Now here comes the quarterback and he fakes it to him. Everybody thinks he has it. He keeps it out here. No one out here. Hit, 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 hit. Down the field, 28. Right now, but wait a minute. Yards. It was Andrews, not Riggs. Now he's expecting Andrews. to get the football. But okay. Wouldn't that lead to a fumble? All right, let me show you something. Well, this is our football. Yeah. Now, as the quarterback comes out, he puts it on his hip, number one. Okay. I'm going to fake to you now. When I get right to you, I'm trying I, to take I it. I short arm it. Ah. Now, when you get here, Blackman cannot see this ball. You and I have it shield. I take one more step. Now he's right by me. He thinks you got it. I turn up, and away I go. And, and I thought I was supposed to get it. Let's see how it works on the field. Notice this. In, 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 come, in motion they go. There's the play action. Now he keeps it. Look at it. Ball's on his left hip. No, hey, where's the football? No one can find it. Down the field it goes. Look at this. High stepping it. Nice and easy. All right. So David Archer. That led to uh, what turned out to be a blocked field goal attempt. And we have a one-point margin. And it'll be Donnelly again for the injured Nick Luckers kicking it off for Atlanta. New England will defend to our right. Taken at the five-yard line, Stephen Starring. Oh, what a hit on Starring at the 13-yard line. Number 52, Aaron Brown, reserve linebacker. Got a pretty good lick on Stephen Starring, the dangerous return man for the New England Patriots. Well, both of these coaches, Dan Henning and Ray Berry, looking for more offense. Stephen Starring, McNeese State, one of the really fine college quarterbacks, as you see, he's outside, whoop, right upside the head. Good stick. Aaron Brown. Okay, first down from the 18-yard line. Stopping Starring behind the 20 is something most teams have not been able to do this season. Tony Eason, the quarterback, will throw on first down. Complete for a first down to Irving Fryer. To the 42-yard line, the dangerous and speedy Irving Fryer. Robert Moore made the tackle there. 24 yards on the play. You have to respect Fryer's speed, Tim, and Moore had him man for man, played off of him 15 yards, very easy for Fryer. Just to drive Moore deep, got his hips to turn. The minute he saw his hips turn, he broke it down. Easton got the football to him. Fryer's had three passes in recent games that would have been touchdowns if he had held on. He dropped them, and uh, Fryer says, you know, they were so easy, they were hard. Well, he worked awful hard in practice, 200 balls a day, Wednesday and Thursday, and he hasn't dropped one yet. Stanley Morgan. He's been the consistent receiver for the Pats all season long. Joel Williams stops him, but not before a gain of eight. Keep in mind, Barry, Coach Raymond Barry said the thing we want to establish is a running game. We want balance between our passing and running. What are they doing in the second half? They're saying, hey, we can't run the football. Let's throw it. Guys are wide open. They're executing extremely well. Second down and two. They've got two tight ends in now. The rookie, Greg Beatty, running Hawthorne. Play action fake. Eason with a lot of time. Can't find a man. A flag is down downfield, and he tried to get it to the back. Craig James. Two flags now. Offsetting penalty. You're going to have a hold on offense. You're going to have a hold on defense after the first flag was thrown. Gene Barthur, referee, the man in the black cat. See, actually, the first flag was thrown on the offense, the second one on the defense. We have multiple holding fouls against the defense. Number 50 and 51, a five-yard penalty, and a first down. Well, good call, Terry. They've got a holding call. The first flag wasn't on New England. It was on Buddy Curry, 50. He's on Craig James. Now, James is coming across the middle. He got a little hook on him there. Got a little hook, but a very little hook. Now that's that's the second flag that was thrown right there. So it is 
A first down at the 45-yard line of Atlanta. Buddy Curry, the leading tackler of the Falcons, with 70 coming into the game. Craig James running hard, had a good hole behind his center, Brock, and the right guard, Wooten. And he blasts down to the 36-yard line of Atlanta. It'll leave a yard to go for a first down. Mike Gann ranged back from defensive end, number 76, to make the tackle. 10 to 9. Atlanta on top. The Falcons at 5, 2, and 1. They're tied against the 49ers, leaving them tied with San Francisco coming into the action. A half game behind the Rams. The Patriots at 5 and 3, trailing first place Jets, who are 7 and 1 in the AFC East. Eason has the first down. Boy, not by much. Flags down. Eason just got to the marker as he scrambled and then ran into some traffic. Personal foul piling on. Number 77 defense, 15 yards and a first down. That's Rick Ryan, two costly penalties against Atlanta. Pushing the Patriots downfield. Well, let's see what happened. You're going to see Eason dropping back, trying to throw the football. He's going to find no one open. Now, Brian, 77, in the right of your screen, who now has disappeared, is chasing in hot pursuit. Eason says, well, I'll get out. I'll get the first down. I've got it. Now he goes down. Now there comes Brian in behind him. If that had been a running back, probably wouldn't have been a flag thrown. But he's a quarterback, and these refs are going to protect the quarterbacks. Well, he had kind of dove into his uh, tucked position there. Put the extra shot. First down at the 20-yard line. New England on the move thanks to the penalties. Craig James getting the ball more often here in this opening series of the second half. Pitts and Curry on the stop. But Craig James, the three-year man from SMU, picks up four yards, leaving second and six. He had been given the one-man job under Ron Meyer, the former Patriots coach, and now joined by Tony Collins in the pro set offense favored by Ray Berry. Robert Weathers out with an ankle injury today, so all of the work so far by Collins and James. We have not seen Tatuku carry the ball. He's the only other available offensive back. Play action. Easton out, and it was intended, I believe, for James, but Hawthorne reached in front thinking that maybe he should catch the ball and they wound up blowing the play. Play action flow to the strong side that time and Eason looked like a delayed screen type of action that was set up or designed for the tight end. Top right of your screen, your screen. see James 32. Now there's Hawthorne 27. Now Hawthorne's outside. This is a screen set up in which Hawthorne actually messed up. He should have released and gone downfield, and that ball should have been caught by James. So it leaves third down and six. They need to get to the 10-yard line for a first down. So an early big play here in the second half. Pressure on Eason just rolls it away. He saw that blitz coming, unloaded to the corner. Nobody there to catch it. And it brings up fourth down. Sometimes you can say brilliant when a player makes a great play or a great pass. That's a great play. This time, Eason, this is a great play. Costello coming in 56. Eason knows he's going to get nailed. He unloads the football to avoid a sack. 15, 18-yard sack would have taken him out of field goal range. So Tony Franklin comes in, and he is marking with his foot at the 23-yard line. It'll be a 33-yard try for Franklin. 17 of 23 in the field goal department. Got a point after block in the first half, but connects from 33 yards away. And the New England Patriots have taken the lead. We are early in the second half at Sullivan Stadium. And the score is now 12-13 to 9 for Atlanta. Well, you've heard the old adage, don't believe everything you read. But indeed the score is... New England 12, Atlanta 10. As we had started to say, the Patriots taking the lead for the first time in the game today on the field goal from 33 yards out by Tony Franklin. And the 
wave is underway as the fans appreciating the fact their squad is finally in front. 11.15 to go. Third quarter. Franklin's kickoff. Taken at the 14-yard line by Cliff Austin. And he gets out to the 30 for the Falcons. Austin playing with a sore foot. Has been used primarily on kickoff return duty. Ed Reynolds made the tackle. Remember Andre Tippett having left the game with a knee injury in the first half. Out of the game for the Patriots defensively. Their sack star, leader of that defense. And in his place, Ed Williams, third year man from Texas, number 54. First down, Atlanta. Play action on first down. Archer, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Tried to hit the tight end, Cox. And it was Darren Barris. Darren Barris getting a hand on it. Big number 60. Second and 10. David Archer getting the call from the sideline. Bob Harrison signals him in. Ed Reynolds in now for Steve Nelson. He was injured in the first half but came back to play, but it may be that what was an apparent knee injury to Nelson is bothering the veteran. Patriots hurting at linebacker. Second down, and Archer will scramble out of there. Trying to get to the marker, and he has stopped short of the 40-yard line. He'll be close to a first down. Sliding in where he's met by Rembert and Ed Williams. Bunch of Williams on this Patriots team. None of Toby, them related. Toby, Brent. Brent, Ed. No relation. Derwin Williams, the wide receiver on the offensive side. The thing that the Patriots are trying to do is to keep Archer in the pocket. Don't allow him outside, but the problem that time was they kept him in the pocket. But when he stepped up front, there was no one there to stop him, and he was able to run and barely just, just didn't miss getting the first down. Third down, about a half yard. Riggs. Riggs, a tackler into New England territory at the 47-yard line. Fred Marion got the free ride on the back of the powerful Gerald Riggs. You can see Marion shaking his head. Marion's the guy they asked to do a lot of tackling. He's a free safety, the leading tackler for the New England Patriots. That time, his, his task was a little bit greater than he had expected, having to meet Riggs head on and then hop on his back and get a little free ride. Well, they, you, yeah, I like a free ride every now and then. They knew what uh, they were in for and talking to these Patriots about Riggs. They said, well, we know what he's capable of, and here he is approaching the 100-yard mark. And this time, William Andrews gets about five, spinning off the left guard, John Scully, behind center Wayne Radloff. How would you like to one time hand the ball to Riggs of all pro running back, one of the great running backs in the National Football League, spell him for a minute and then bring in William Andrews, the young man who he replaced when Andrews went down with a knee operation. In comes that William, and he looks to me like he's as healthy as ever as he drives up inside for three, four yards. It'll be second down and seven. Andrews stays in as they set back. motion it to Andrews and he is met by the linebacker and stopped after a gain of two. It was Ed Williams number 54 doing his job the way it's written up on the blackboard. Even the Bradshaw blackboard would show you how to play that one. Well, that that time Ron Milton number 87 tied in his responsibility was to hook Ed Williams 54. Now he didn't make he was unable or, or Wizen Hunt 45 was unable to do that and allowed Williams inside to make the stop. If he gets that block Tim then he allows Williams the opportunity to get out to the right side and make big yardage. Extra down lineman in for the Pats along with McSwain and Gibson in the secondary. Third down and about six required for the first down. in trouble is dropped. Toby Williams nose tackle. Second sack of the afternoon for the Patriots. Big number 90 on the nose. 
First Salem did nose tackles are able to make sacks, but when a quarterback is flushed out, such as Archer was that time, they're able to get in and make the stop. So the Pats rise up defensively, and Atlanta will have to punt. Rick Donnelly's third of the afternoon. Irving Fryer waits for it at the 12-yard line. Pretty and good. rush, and he got that ball way up there. Falcons trying to keep it outside the end zone, and they do. Johnny Rem, not uh, number 52, I believe. Yes, it was. Rembert. No, not Rembert. Aaron Brown. Aaron Brown, number 52, downed it inside the five, but a flag down upfield at the line of scrimmage, Terry, and they may bring it back and do it over again. Falcons are working their way back upfield, so... That 42-yard punt will be wiped out. Illegal up. motion for 30 on the offense. The left end. Five-yard penalty will re-kick. David Crudup got downfield too soon. And Irving Fryer down there as a cheerleader at the 10-yard line trying to whip up the crowd. We noticed before the game when the Patriots came out just prior to the kickoff several of the wide receivers went down to the end zone and started to rip up the crowd get them involved in the game prior doing it here now another good punt by Donnelly but that one will go through the end zone and out so New England will start from their 20 yard line a 51 yarder but not nearly the same good result the second time. New England leads by two here in the third. We're back at Sullivan Stadium. The roar of the crowd, a direct reaction to the exhortation of Irving Fryer, who acts as a cheerleader down there. The only other player I've seen that's as active as that in that department is Walter Payton of the Bears. He gets the crowd involved out there too. obviously he feels like the fans aren't into the game and he feels like we need to support so come on give us some noise well, it's first down from the 20 Patriots ball here in the third quarter they lead by two and Craig James has dropped right at the line of scrimmage struggled forward for maybe a yard and a half and Tony Casillas the nose tackle made the stop we had a nice visit with him last night as you can tell he said one of the things about this job of being a nose tackle is not the most pleasant task in the world. You're always having someone over your face right in breathing on you and every day every game it's a new player and you have to learn how to pick up little things from them you know and he said when I play him the second time though I know exactly what I want to do against him. Well he held him to about a yard and a half to two for him for the first time with Collins in the backfield for New England. Wants to throw, and it is Hawthorne holding on for a first down out to the 39-yard line. Greg Hawthorne caught the ball in traffic and held on. So the Patriots get quickly upfield with that gain. 38-yard line after a 17-yard pickup. Yeah, Casilla says playing nose tackle. He says kind of a doggy position. So that is just, you know, not a place you want to be. I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, I feel like a fire hydrant a lot of the time. <laughs> Two or three guys on him on every play. You're going to see it again. He doesn't like, one of the things he does, look at him holding. This Brock is holding him. The old veteran is holding him. One of the things he didn't like was the fact that he didn't get the sack. He wants to get more involved in sacks. All right, it is first down and out to Hawthorne again. And Hawthorne another first down inside Atlanta territory at the 49, forced out by Reggie Wilkes there. So two in a row for Greg Hawthorne and a 12-yard pickup. Raymond Berry said, you know, we really should be going more and more to Hawthorne. He said, our game is designed to get it to the wide receivers. That's the way I believe it should go. And we've got guys like Morgan and Fryer and Starring and Williams and Cedric Jones. But he said, we've got to get the ball more to Greg Hawthorne. We know he can catch it. Here we're seeing it. Second half. Pats up by two. Play action. Deep drop by Eason. Off to Tatupu. Nosey to Tupu with a good piece of running after he caught the ball, gains about five. We talked earlier about Toby Williams saying the plan those tackles like being in a telephone booth by yourself and softly cry to look at this. One, two, three guys get on him, gets hit a third time. Still pushing off, trying to make the play. 
Two more hits. That's five. And then all he gets out of that is a shoe. <laughs> Second and six. Tatupu again, and Tatupu picks up maybe two yards on forward progress. We'll see where they spot it for him. Curry and Wilkes that time on the tackle. Could be a young man, Tony Casillas, as we go to him again. Maybe the young man that's defensive player of the year in his rookie year. Double teamed once again. There's the hit up inside. Guard, center, both on him. He spins off and gets in and makes a piece of the tackle. Great attitude this young man has. He got poked in the eye last week against the Rams, and the Rams started to run the ball much more effectively once he was out of there. A new position from what he played in college, and was willing to do it for Marion Campbell. Third down. About five, Easton, and almost picked off. Again, the rush. And Eason not getting everything on the ball into traffic down there was Scott Case with a chance to come up with the intercept. Mike Gann, 76, defensive left end, did a good job that time of getting in, putting the pressure, forcing Eason to unload the football before he wanted to. There's Gann. A pretty good defensive line with Casillas, Gann, and Bryan, and then Pitts, of course, backing them up when they go to their four down linemen. Rich Camarillo. Averaging almost 40 yards a punt on three tries this afternoon. He's standing at his 43-yard line. A two-point game with 4.13 to go third quarter. Short punt by Camarillo. It's a Patriots bounce. And now back upfield right about the 15-yard line. It'll be down there. So it turns out all right for Rich Camarillo. And the Falcons will start with the ball at their 16-yard line. Trailing by two here in the third quarter. A gray day in this part of New England. We are at Sullivan Stadium, where the New England Patriots lead Atlanta 12 to 10 in the third quarter. And a tough defensive battle in the first half, ending with Atlanta leading by a point, 10 to 9. But Tony Franklin's 33-yard field goal early in the third quarter has the Patriots on top for the first time today. Close down, Atlanta at their own 16-yard line following the Camarillo punt. Darrell Briggs, flag down to the 25-yard line, stopped short of the first down by Marion and Ed Reynolds, number 95, reserve linebacker. And the holding call from Gene Barr signaled against the Falcons. And again, the story of the Pats' defensive injuries today. Andre Tippett going out. Steve Nelson playing hurt has been in and out of the lineup. Lawrence McGrew couldn't start today because of an knee injury. Offense number 61 holding will repeat the down after a 10-yard penalty. John Scully, number 61. The left guard does not agree with the call, naturally. Well, after that personal foul against uh, the... Steve Moore earlier, uh, you notice that Scully just gave him a little lip service, kind of real quiet like. So it will be first down and 17 as they mark it at the distance. Archer slipped as he threw, but got the ball out to Wisenhut. And Wisenhut is pulled down at about the 14-yard line. Ed Williams on the tackle, number 54. We've had 16 penalties in the game so far, Terry, and they have uh, really affected the rhythm and the tempo of this contest. Each team has taken eight, and uh, there's been a lot of going backwards. Well, been, the tempo's been disrupted by the penalties. That time they had another linebacker blitz, three linebackers blitzed. Fullback stepped up, picked him up, and then Archer slipped as he threw the football to Wisenhunt. Wisenhunt with his blitz control, and he did a good job of catching it and getting for the, for the yards back. Second and 11, Atlanta. Roy Dixon in motion. Darrell Riggs on the short side. Traffic. Good defensive work. 
Ryan coming up to help out. And the linebacker, Reynolds, number 95, in on the tackle. If you can get good defensive line play and good linebacker play where you're stringing people out, then you'll allow your secondary to come up and make tackles such as what Mary and the free safety 31 did that time. Something that we can be looking for later, though, with the line, with the safeties getting so close to the line of scrimmage, Tim, I kind of would expect to see maybe a little gadget pass later by one of the running backs because these guys are getting nose trouble and boom, go in right behind them for a big gainer. Nickel defense in for the Patriots on this passing down. Dixon in motion. Pressure on Archer and he is set. Garen Barris, third sack of the afternoon for the Pats. He's got two of them. You're going to see Barris 60 left in. You're going to see Blackman 55 coming up from the outside. You're going to see 96 Williams, Brent Williams, as he gets inside, and Ken Sims, number 77. All of them inside putting pressure, and eventually Barris getting the sack. Seven-yard loss to the 10-yard line. Again, watching Glenn Howe, however, did a pretty good job blocking, and he was the kind of question mark at right tackle for Atlanta today. From the end zone, Donnelly. Dandy up Fryer to the 41. Fryer dangerous. He'll score. No flag. Cornered with Dane that separates one athlete from another is speed. And right now, what you're seeing is just tremendous speed. Fire down. Now, here's the cutback. But watch. Acceleration. Drives him past everyone into the end zone. Touchdown. Irving Fryer. 59 yards. The return of the punt. The third year man from Nebraska. And a happy wide receiver crew celebrating the score. And a player injured on the play, I believe a Patriot down. Well, he attended to the injured Patriot. We've been unable to identify him so far. We'll see that play again. Fryer, one of the great athletes in America coming out of Nebraska, number one draft choice of the Patriots. Now he does a good job of splitting the defense, the uh, punt coverage team. Now he just dodges one guy, now just turns his speed on this. He just outruns his blockers and everyone else and high steps it into the end zone, spikes a ball, does a little dance, finger points to his wife and his baby in the end zone. There's the spike. Now there's a dance is coming up later. <laughs> it's a little version of a dance, I might add. You can't do a lot of dancing in the end zone anymore. Well, Fryer had been out there pepping up the, the fans, doing his cheerleading routine, and the injured player Ernest is Gibson. Ernest Gibson. Nickelback in the defense and remember the specials teams from Furman, a third-year man, law student. Ernest and uh, looks like a leg injury to Ernest Gibson. So the Patriots have had some people banged up today. Now Franklin will come in to attempt the point after to widen the Patriots lead. He had one blocked earlier after being perfect on the season. And he gets this one. So the New England fans like these developments with 124 to play third quarter. The Patriots lead it 19 to 10. All right. There's the touchdown. Here's boogie to boogie to boogie. Yes. Da 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 da. Yeah. Back behind you. Hand slap. High five. Low five. U five. We're gone. <laughs> Tim Ryan with Terry Bradshaw at Sullivan Stadium where you can see the rains have come. Ray Berry has pulled up the hood. But he's feeling a little more comfortable with things and the sellout crowd here at Sullivan Stadium enjoying the electrifying punt return by Irving Fryer. Irving Fryer said just this last week I've lost confidence in myself. That referred to dropping a few passes that could have been scores. He's got to be feeling real confident right now. Short kickoff comes down at the 22 yard line. And it's Cliff Austin getting over the 25. 
And Atlanta will start from there. Down by nine. Time winding down here in the third period. Remember next week the NFL Today begins a full afternoon of NFL action on CBS. Some of you will see the Chicago Bears against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We saw the Bucs well out in front of their game earlier today. And some of you will see the Rams against the Saints. And Atlanta fans most interested in that battle. The New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles are doubleheader game. Another key matchup in the NFC East. You will not see the doubleheader game in Atlanta. First down, Falcons. Play action, fake to Riggs. Archer deep. Incomplete, intended for Charlie Brown. And back on the coverage, Raymond Claiborne, number 26. Lepet on the other corner has five interceptions, and yet Atlanta felt that they could probably do some business over there. Claiborne, while well, he has not got that number of interceptions, really hasn't been so busy, and I guess that means, Terry, that his coverage has been outstanding. Well, talking to Lepet and asking him about his interceptions, he said the main reason I've had him is because so many people are throwing on me out of respect for Ray for Claiborne on the other side. So therefore, I've had more opportunities. Claiborne hasn't today. They're throwing on Claiborne. Second and ten. 107 to go third quarter. Archer gets some time, has his man. First down at the 40-yard line. And it is Charlie Brown. You know what I've noticed today, which should not be a surprise with the quality of the receivers on these teams, we have seen darn few dropped passes. I mean, clean drops where the ball arrived and went in and out of the hands of a player who should have caught the ball. Well, that's true. And and uh, the couple of passes we had seen dropped were one by uh, tight end uh, uh, Greg Hawthorne and by James, uh, a fullback on a screen. Other than that, the wide receivers have not dropped any. Boy, they've been just superior, both sides. First down, the 41-yard line of the Falcons. Riggs is hit behind the line. Somebody came free, Rembert. The linebacker in there for Lawrence McGrew, and Rembert got him as he got the ball. One of the things an offensive lineman has to do when he is pulling is that if the linebacker comes his side, as you see, Rembert 52 is over Scully. Now, when Scully pulls, what he has to do is see that guy coming and make a stay call and stay right there. Otherwise, you're going to get your guy sacked, and that's what happened. At the end of the third quarter with the score, the New England Patriots 19, the Atlanta Falcons 10. We now pause for a word from your local station. 100 years. Archer just got the ball off here as we return at Sullivan Stadium and completed it to Wisenhunt. It'll be a gain of about six yards. They were second and 17 after that loss with the play by Rembert on the running back rakes. One of the things that we we probably should mention, it, it, there is a drizzle that the fans probably are having a hard time seeing, Tim, and it works to the benefit of the offensive team because these guys, the receivers, know where they're going. Defensive backs have to be a little careful because of the footing. Third down and seven, Atlanta. Down by nine, we just opened the fourth quarter. Charlie Brown in motion. Archer, it's tipped, incomplete. The line of scrimmage. That big group of defensive linemen. Somebody got a hand on the ball. Right now, let's take you to Brent Musburger in New York for an NFL update. Well, I'll tell you, Tim, the hottest running back in the league is not Eric Dickerson. It's Joe Morris. He just scored his second touchdown for the Giants against the Cowboys. 169 more rushing yards, 350 in two weeks. Let's go back to Tim. Joe Morris, how about that? <laughs> he is something. That little running back for the New York Giants. The bullet. Not little, he's actually, he's just short. Not small, he's short. short. He's like you. <laughs> he's short. He can really But motor. you're a little short. See, there's a difference between the got, short uh, and little short. Some kind of question on the field while we were in our NFL update. And uh, Gene Barth over there talking to the Atlanta coaching staff. Explaining something. Just have to try and find out what this one's all about. There's a fourth Please. down coming up for Atlanta. Barth back there ready to go. 
Well, now he's going to go and talk to Ray Berry. So it might be a communication problem. It may be that Atlanta's lost. Yes, they're fooling with their wires their down wires. there. Yeah. They're telling Raymond Berry that Atlanta coaching staff has lost contact with the press box where their coaches are. And if that's the case, now the New England Patriot coaches have to take off their headsets. There could be no communication, no advantage here. Well, at the advantage falls to New England, I submit, because Raymond Berry has Steve Grogan calling the plays. They rely much more on what happens in the game on the field. They talk to wide receivers, running back, blockers. And uh, at this point, if there is an advantage at all, it falls in favor of New England. And the punt by Donnelly. Beautiful. Taken at the 16-yard line, and Irving Fryer out of bounds. Knocked out by Tim Terrell, number 32, just re-signed again this week. Been in and out of that roster of Atlanta over the last two or three years. Every time somebody gets hurt, they bring back old Tim. They did Tim's it again this week. A, he's the only guy that's that's mm -hmm. been cut by Atlanta so many times, he's bought a home in Atlanta because he realizes he'd be called back again. 39-yard <laughs> punt. Well, next Saturday, another chance to remind you that ACC action will feature the Tar Heels. How do you say that? That's Clemson. 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 Uh, is that better? Like Clemson that. Tigers. You got it. 2.30 Eastern time here on CBS. <laughs> First down. Gain of about two for Mosi Tatupu. Two for Tatupu. Hmm. There he is, number 30. Most popular guy here with the fans. Right, He's well, got a fan club here called Mosey's Mooses. Well, they got Tatupu and we got Mo uh, Tuyasa Sopo. It'd be nice to have. Well, how about that for a backfield? Tatupu and Tuyasa Sopo. <laughs> for a southern guy, that's, that's pretty hard to say. Maybe he had to start a franchise in Samoa. Second down and eight. has some time and it is incomplete. Oh. What a hit on Hawthorne. Hawthorne the intended receiver and it was Crudup. He really got a lick on him and Greg is getting up a little slow. He took that right in the midsection. At the very least he had his wind knocked out of him. I don't see how in the world Crudup could can go in like that. I as an ex-athlete as, as you look at Crudup am amazed at the at the the absolutely fearless uh, attitude that these defensive backs have. That time, Crudup full blast head just stuck it right in into Greg's ribs. And I, all I can think about is something bad happening to the guy delivering the blow, such as a you know a broken neck. Crudup, 5'8", 185 pounder, not a big guy, but. Uh, he can really pop him. We're going to see this again. Now, Crudup will be coming in from the left of your screen. There's Hawthorne going for the ball. Now, look, watch this. Just dives right in there and just throws leads with his head. Well, and that's something uh, that is in the rule book as a no-no. To uh, use uh, the uh, helmet at all is uh, simply illegal. But uh, that one perhaps happening so quickly that uh, was unseen. It always is more apparent when you're looking at it in slow motion, obviously, than at the actual time. Crude up a young man, Tim, that's playing out of position, actually. He's really a safety forced over to play cornerback. Bobby Butler went down with a broken leg, and Crudup's been doing a fine job there. Third down, and about eight. Inside handoff. Collins, first down. Crude up on the tackle. Good call that time by the quarterback. Guessing with the defense, guessing pass. Show, give him the run. Run the ball with Collins. Now you come back. Now what are they going to do? They're going to run. They're going to pass. Let's see what Grogan decides to do. Grogan with the clipboard and the, and the hat on. That's Ramsey, the other quarterback. He singles, signals in the plays. And I see he's got the headset back on, so they may have uh, put communications back together. First down. The Tupu and behind the line and stacked up by four of the Falcons out that right side. Joel Williams, Atlanta 54, defense. the right outside linebacker, knocked off the block, got outside. Once again, we talked about linebackers avoiding the initial block and then forcing the runner back inside where all the motion is coming from. Williams, 54, did a good job that time of forcing the Tupu back inside. Rick Bryan and uh, nose tackle Casillas cleaned it up. 
will gain second down. That's hard to say. Mosey, second and ten. Blitz. Eason steps up inside of it and has a man. Career high 55 yards rushing. That tells you that the guy has ability. He can move, run with the football. A boy, then Brady gets inside. He's knocked down. He gets out. Presence of mind. He finds Collins, and now it's just a foot race as Brett Clark, number 28, strong safety, comes up and finally knocks Collins out of bounds. Now you can get in the, and see what Easton had to face. There you see Gann coming on the outside. Casillas up on the inside. Wilkes on the outside, then he steps up, no one there, beats it off. Great job by Tony Eason, and a first down at the 16-yard line, they marked the ball in Atlanta territory. Whoops, miscue there, ran into Tatupu, and it almost picked up. In and out of the hands of Reggie Wilkes, as Eason, after a brilliant piece of improvisation on the previous play, Kind of lost is cool on that one. One of the problems you have with play action passes is that you can't see everyone on the field because you can't pre-read. You have your back turned to the coverage. As you can see, his back is turned to the coverage. He runs into to, 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 <laughs> whatever, Mosey. and then he throws the ball right into 51 Reggie Wilkes. As I look at this, that's five interceptions that Easton should have today. And if Atlanta loses this football game, they can go directly to the fact that they've dropped so many interceptions. It is second and ten. Really be in the driver's seat if the uh, Patriots would be in the driver's seat if they can get in on this drive. They lead by nine. We're in the fourth quarter. Not much running room out there for Collins, and he's knocked out of bounds right near the line of scrimmage. Got maybe a yard at the most. And it was Buddy Curry and David Crudup taking him out. Last time we saw New England in this situation on this end of the field, Tim, they came out with an option that was actually a loss of about 14 yards. So I wonder if this position again, and we know they have another gadget play, something fancy, re double reverse with a pass off of it. I wonder if, if Brogan will call another fancy play. Well, they're in the shotgun formation. They need to get to the six yard line for a first down. It is third and about eight and a half. Eason going for deep and it is incomplete. Stefan Starring looked like he was trying to get inside Crudup, which would have put him on a post pattern and nobody over in the corner. A flag is down meanwhile on the plate, Terry. Interesting call now. If you have holding on New England, do you back him up and give him an opportunity to make the first down? Or do you force him, deny the penalty and let him go ahead and kick a field goal? Holding, 68 offense, penalty refused, fourth down. So they'll have to kick the field goal or attempt it. They have a nine-point lead. Now we're getting into fun time, folks. It's 11.22 left to go in the fourth quarter. Depending on what happens here with Tony Franklin, if he gets it, they need two touchdowns. Atlanta will to catch up. If they stop him, well, it's obvious. They've only got nine points to overcome. Well, I'm going to say this before he kicks it. Number one, you got to have a good snap. It's raining and the ball could be wet, so very important to have a good snap and a good hold. 31-yard try for the league's leading scorer. And he's got it. Tony Franklin delivers from 31 yards away. Now the Atlanta Falcons are up against it on foreign soil here at Sullivan Stadium in New England. There is Tony Franklin about to kick it off. He has widened the New England lead 22 to 10. But Tony is really most of all as a hockey fan. Boy, he talked my ear off at practice about hockey. He is a former Philadelphia resident, of course, but lives in San Antonio, Texas, but he follows that National Hockey League. And Franklin will kick it off. We have 11-18 to play as the Pats went 65 yards in nine plays, used up 245 on the clock. Sylvester Stamps and Boston are the deep men. And that 
going to go out of bounds. So Franklin is back upfield, kicks that tee back to the 30. Tony. Well, next week here on CBS Sports, more excitement on the NFL, and a lot of you will be watching the Bears and the Bucks, the defending Super Bowl champions against the Buccaneers, and the Bucks are leading Buffalo 34 to 21 today, and that means this guy and this guy, Young and Wilder, must be having a big game against the Bills. Jim McMahon, Mr. Excitement, whether he's on the field or off, and the incomparable Walter Payton, just a few of the stars you'll be watching next week as the Bears meet the Bucks in an NFC Central matchup here on CBS Sports. And you can see, look at this one, that's a fun game. Two Tampa young quarterbacks, Bay. Tim. <laughs> Kelly and Steve Young, two fine young quarterbacks. Uh, Steve Young's a guy that I had a nice talk with, Culver House, the owner of Tampa Bay, and he asked me what I thought of his quarterback, Steve Young, and I said, hey, Coach, you've got yourself a player, and if you'll surround him with good people, this guy can make it happen. And I believe that, and Jim Kelly the same way. So they're having a shootout down in Tampa. Next week, it's Young against McMahon. Franklin, a little better boot by Franklin, comes down at the 10, taken by Austin there. Humble's ball, and it is Patriot ball. Starring with a nice piece of athletic skill, grabbed hold of that ball, didn't try to do anything more with it, keep possession. Well, at night, when Brendan Berry first came here, they only recovered eight. New England, eight out of 33 opponents' fumbles. And since he's been here, they've done 24 recoveries out of 35 fumbles. And this is why they stripped the football, Austin drops it, and then it's finally recovered. And it was old Mosey who knocked it loose here, I believe. There it is, number 30, Mosey Tatupu. Diving tackle, got a hand on the ball. Well, shut the door time for the Patriots if they can get it in from here. Attacking. He's an incomplete, tipped away. <laughs> intended down the middle of the field. Joel Williams tipped it away. It was intended for Stanley Morgan. And Williams, number 54, with a hand on the ball. Boy, a, a most in our opportune time for Atlanta to fumble the football, an opportunity to get the football down, get back into the football game. Now, as you said, Tim, they turn the ball over to New England on the 20-yard line going in, explosive offense, number one in the AFC. They can put the game away by scoring a touchdown here. 15 and 31 is Tony East of 263 yards. He has a second and ten, gives it to Tony Collins. Collins picks up six, maybe seven on the play. Tony Collins from East Carolina, number two pick in 1981, lost his starting job when they went to the one back. Craig James was the runner for Ron Meyer, the previous Patriots coach, but now back in the action under Ray Berry, an injured player on the field. Looks like Rick Bryant of the Falcons, number 77, is down. Having uh, what they're saying in Atlanta is an all pro year at right defensive end. Third year out of Oklahoma. Well, they can't afford to lose any more players. They've lost Johnson. Bobby Butler. Bobby Butler at left corner. Two starters right there. We've got Anthony Allen and Brett Miller out of their offense. And the Pats having a tough time today. They already have Lynn Dawson down, of course, probably for the season from their offensive tight end position. Mm -hmm. And then today, uh, losing Andre Tippett, Steve Nelson has been in, in and, and out, out of the lineup. That's yeah, right. with a bad knee, and Lawrence McGrew unable to go today because of a knee injury. Their outstanding linebacking core. They must be grateful for the depth because they've been getting good performances today from uh, Rembert and Ed Williams and Ed Reynolds uh, filling in. Been doing a fine job. So Brian uh, being assisted off. It doesn't look like it's too serious, but he's out of the lineup. Pitts comes on the field, number 74. And it'll be third down and six for the Patriots trying to put this game away. There's Pitts. Dennis Harrison also in, another of those former Eagles picked up on waivers from San Francisco. Marion Campbell had Wilkes and Williams and Harrison and Herman Edwards up in Philadelphia knows what they can do and knows most importantly they know his defense. Well, he needs them all right now. Big, big play for Atlanta. 
and they have stopped the Patriots inside run on that play but setting up another field goal opportunity for Franklin to Tupu stopped by Joel Williams after getting to the 16 yard line and Franklin will air out that naked foot again. Well that's one of those times where you got to kind of wonder what their their thinking was uh, needing six seven yards for first down they've thrown the ball well made things happen Eason getting out of the pocket so I kind of expected maybe an option to Collins that time but not a quick quick dive play all that did was really was set up Franklin for another field goal attempt. Now does Eason go back and tell Steve boy that's Paul Stink. Huh? <laughs> what a lousy call. You, Steve. Run that call. Hey, you get out here and really? run that call. <laughs> Franklin from the 23 yard line and it is good. Another field goal by Tony Franklin and making things look awfully dark under dark skies in Foxborough for the visiting Atlanta Falcons, 25 to 10. Well, we've been watching those clouds thicken and blow in from the northeast, and the rain has really arrived heavily now here at Sullivan Stadium, a 15-point margin for the Patriots, who stand at 5-3 and three in the AFC East Division behind the leading New York Jets and Dan Henning saying come on guys there's lots of time on the clock 938 but uh, they are trailing by 15 points 25 to 10 on four field goals by this young man Tony Franklin kickoff comes down at the 12 yard line William Andrews runs it straight ahead over the 30 to the 32 so Atlanta with pretty good field position to start from. Rod McSwain made the tackle. But the Falcons have got to make something happen offensively because here's what they've been doing. And that will not get it done. From their own 30, from their own 16, from their own 26, they've had three punts and then the fumble kickoff, a real killer on the last one. And the Patriots taking advantage, coming up with another three points and a 15-point lead. And Terry Bradshaw in the rain at Sullivan Stadium. David Archer up against it now for Atlanta. Lakes. Got about three. And do you want to throw on first down there, quarterback? Well, you have to. You, you're down. It's 9-17 left in the game. And you've got to get some points on the board. You know, I, I, I don't question that, uh, that running is a good play, but... I think the only way you can get back to the game and get back fast is by throwing the football. It'll leave second and nine for Archer and company. Kenneth Sims made the, the tackle. Six foot five, 280 pounder coming back from his back injury and working in slowly. He's a dandy. Stamps getting some running room. Stamps to the 30 out of bounds near the 20 yard line. Well, wouldn't you know, just after we're thinking maybe that Atlanta should be throwing the ball upfield, they get a 48 yard run from Sylvester Stamps. It's one of those plays that's, in, you know, once again, you kind of want to question the call, a little off tackle, a little sweep with an option. Stamps just gets outside, cuts back across the grain. There's another missed tackle, and then, it, then the Marion falls down, and then Stamps picks up Joy's. Uh, Block downfield and then gets down there and all of a sudden now Atlanta's uh, fighting, trying to get in that end zone. Well, they needed a big play, uh, obviously with the clock starting to work against them and they're down 15 points, so they need better than two touchdowns. And uh, they get it on the ground with Sylvester Stamps churning it up for 48. And I'm sure feeling uh, he should have been in the end zone, but he's got them down there at the 20-yard line. An injured Patriot player is on the sideline. On the near sideline, we haven't been able to pick him up. There's somebody huddled around him. But it's been a tough day physically for the New England Patriots. McSwain. Rod McSwain, a former Falcon, oddly enough. And uh, the, I believe the last man to, to catch up with Stamps and knock him out of bounds. You can see, actually, you'll see right in the center of your screen, now McSwain right in the center is coming over to deliver the blow. Trips over a player. He trips over Joey Jones, falls down on his left shoulder. Well, we've seen two of those uh, injuries, although this one appears not so serious. Is Andre Tippett. Tippett gone with a knee. We had no uh, later report on Andre Tippett's, the severity of his knee injury. Let's watch this one again. Sylvester running down the sideline. Joey Jones making a great effort to give him some help downfield. Now there's the, as you see, there's McSwain diving across Joey Jones, landing on his left shoulder. 
he is favoring it coming off the field and we are now advised that it is a knee sprain. Jeez, a Andre knee Tippett. Uh, oh, okay. I'm talking about Tippett's injury Terry because I know Patriots fans got to be concerned about their superstar linebacker a sprained knee. Well folks uh, that's, that's not a real deep medical uh, explanation for you but uh, generally when they call it a sprain it means that uh, they've got a chance to get him back in action in the not too distant future. Let's hope that's the case. First down. From the 20 yard line. Archer gets lots of time. Hits a man up the middle and a good catch by Riggs out of the backfield. Gerald Riggs bobbled it momentarily but held on and has them now at the 12 yard line. One of the things that Atlanta likes in their offense is the fact that they can get their single back, Riggs, the only back in there, out underneath if the linebackers drop deep. He goes down there seven or eight yards and turns around, and then the quarterback just pops in the football. That time they jumped in the man, and then Riggs went down, made a little fake outside, came back inside, and Archer hit him with the football. Riggs with 11 catches coming into the game, most of them of that variety, second and two. Riggs running outside, has some room. Now is picked up by Marion, but carries him as he had as much of the day for a first down. Red Marion is going to be happy to see 42 disappear from uh, his mind when this game's over. Really? This is a great effort by Riggs, Tim, because I, I've said this throughout the telecast. He is a power back. That means up inside the tackle, straight ahead, hitting people, knocking them down 8, 10 yards, 5 yards. That's his game. As you can see, 24 carries for 98 yards. A good, solid effort on his behalf today. Atlanta, 203 yards rushing. That's what they like to do, get him the ball. At least 20 carries, 25 a game. He'll usually get his 100. Play faked him this time. Archer trying to find an open man. Now he'll run. And Archer gets to the five-yard line. Forced out by Ed Reynolds, the linebacker number 95. For McSwain, Rod McSwain, Tim, has just been reported that he's out. Of, won't be back for the rest of the game. Has a sprained left shoulder, a bruised left shoulder. So we won't be seeing him anymore today. Reynolds, number 95, the man who's having to fill the shoes of Tippett over there at the left outside linebacker. So much of our pregame discussion centering on those outside linebackers. Even Steve Nelson telling us, boy, I like to play in here. Age 35, I got those two guys outside. They can keep yeah. you in the league a little longer. And, uh, and from Atlanta's point of view, saying they recognize what a factor Blackman and Tippett would be defensively. So credit to the subs. They're doing a good job. Thanks. Superb defensive play. Ronnie LePet coming up, and Rembert, the linebacker, right there to help him, but the little guy from the corner made the play. Ronnie LePet. LePet, left corner, 42, coming up, making a, a big yeah. tackle this time on Riggs. As you can see, left side of your screen, folks. Yeah. Look in motion, cuts back inside. Now, he, tight ends trying to get a block on, on LePet, but no work. LePet, I'm sorry. He told me the day he did not like Lippet. I said Lippet and Tippet on the same side. And he corrected me real quickly and said it's LePet. Yeah, so it's LePet. It's LePet and LePet. Right. The only reason he really stressed it was because people kept making it sound like it wasn't spelled with an E. And he just said, we're going to have to make it formally LePet. Archer rolling out left. Lobs it up. It's caught at the goal line, but outside the goal line. Again, top defense. They wouldn't let him in. Sims wrapped up Charlie Brown. And Brown had a bit of a physical mismatch against Sims, to say the least. A 280-pounder couldn't pull his way into the end zone. You can see Brown in the bottom of the screen. Archer's going to come to Brown's side, and Brown drives down inside. It's a little zone. Notice all the defensive backs just standing in the end zone. They're just standing there because it's zone, not man. Brown goes up, makes a tough catch, and then turns around and tries to lean and get the football into the end zone. Yeah, he was making a pretty good move on the muscle against Marion, but when Sims got there, no chance. Andrews in the lineup, fourth down at the one-yard line. The thing that, that made them hesitate was the fact that they thought that Riggs would stop. 
But this man is so strong and has such great effort in these short yarded situations that he by keep continuing moving his legs, Tim, he vi he finally gets in the end. Look at he stopped there. Now they think, well, he is stopped. He's dead. But look now the final drive. Boom. He shoves himself into the end. So look at the ball laying over the line. And that's all you have to have is the football to break that plane. So Gerald Riggs with a second effort has had himself quite an afternoon rushing and gets into the end zone with a touchdown. The point after is good as we look at Gerald Riggs and there is still time for something good to happen 516 but the Patriots have other ideas. Tim Ryan and Terry Bradshaw. And Terry, uh, might we see uh, the onside kick try here? 516 left. You go downfield, try to get the ball back to the defense. You could. Uh, I don't think they need a touchdown. They need a field goal, Tim, to, to get ahead and win this football game. I think they're probably going to call on their defense to go in and stop them. I would expect New England, if they did anything to run the football, if they threw, to throw nothing but little safe screen passes. So I would say right now they'll kick it deep and hope their defense can stop them. Heavy rain. Now a factor on the field Donnelly who kicked the point after with the back spasms to Luckers they're showing on side Donnelly is out here to kick it off now how much practice has he had at that he lets it fly going for the sideline and into the end zone they will not bring it out. So it'll be first down from the 20 yard line what a job this guy's done Rick Donnelly having to kick off today with the injury to. Mick Luckhurst in the warm up, a back spasm. And meanwhile, in this Atlanta division, that? New Orleans with an upset over the 49ers. Well, that'll help Atlanta's cause. Yes, indeed. 49ers fall to 5, 3, and 1. And New Orleans moves to 4 and 5 under Jim Moore, the new coach. Miami with a shutout of Houston. Pittsburgh's back. Trailing both Cleveland and Cincinnati as they both win today. St. Louis leading Philadelphia and Dallas losing to the Giants so far 17 14 first down at the 20 yard line and the Patriots want to keep the football Tony Collins gets about a yard so now the running game which has been a problem in recent games for New England Ray Berry acknowledging you'd like to have better balance we heard Craig James say that they're not getting the, the pop from the offensive line driving people back that they'd like to feels that uh, he and Collins could do a better job of running the ball. And now here's where they need that running game. They need the running game. And well, even though they're the number one passing offense in the American Football Conference, one of the key factors that the fans should know and realize is that in New England, it gets cold in here in another two weeks in December. You must be able to run the football because it gets very difficult to continue with a great passing attack. That is Mosi Tatupu, and he picks up three, maybe four yards. That would leave them with about 68 yards at rushing on the day. 66 make it. And it has not been a strength for them this afternoon, but they're in front on the scoreboard. Defense has 12 men on the field. Well, that's one way to stop the rush. Get an extra guy out there, load up all those gaps. And that's a hurt and penalty for the Atlanta Falcons. Well, you don't need to make mistakes like that. You should call a timeout. If you're going to substitute in for situational substitution, which is what that was, expecting a pass, then you get those guys in there. Someone should be responsible for counting. Whoever the captain is, make the count. If you have 12 men on the field, call a timeout. Because what you're trying to do is get Defense the ball. Defense has 12 men on the field, five yards penalty, and we'll replay the down. So it is second down and three now, and a big break for the Patriots there. They want to keep the football. That's their object, 4-13, counting down. So instead of third and six, Tim, it's second and three. Now if, they, if you have to force them to throw and they throw an incompletion, you get the ball back with three minutes and 40 seconds left. Lot formation to the right, two setbacks are Collins and Tatupu. To Tupu, he's got a hole and he has a first down over the 35 to the 37 yard line running behind Fairchild and Holloway. Clark and Moore made the tackle. Mosey to Tupu. First down, the 37 yard line. So the Patriots now very much in the driver's seat. 326, they have a first down. They're moving the ball toward midfield and an eight point margin in their favor. Tony 
Eason, 15 of 31 passing, 263 yards. Tupu again battles his way for three yards to the 40-yard line of the Patriots. Patriots, if they can hang on. Atlanta takes a timeout. If the Patriots hold on to their victory, they would move up to six and three. The Jets standing atop at seven and one, playing at Seattle in a later game. And with this timeout, a reminder that as usual on Sunday evenings following football activity, you always have an outstanding evening of entertainment. It begins with 60 Minutes, and tonight's 60 Minutes looks at the biggest child abuse case in history, plus an Israeli war movie that's not your typical Army training film. These stories and more tonight on 60 Minutes, and then the popular Murder, She Wrote with Angela Lansbury and a CBS TV movie, Something in Common, with Tuesday Weld, Ellen Burstyn, Eli Wallach, and Don Murray. So it sounds like fine evening ahead, as usual, Sunday nights on CBS. Second and seven when play resumes at the 40-yard line. Eason discussing something as he shows his backpedaling ability with <laughs> conversations with Grogan and Barry and saying, let's get this game over with him, getting wet out here. Had a good day, made some big plays happen. Two of them, of course, off of his scrambling ability. I think Archer has played a good game, had some bad breaks, but uh, I think overall he's made, he showed improvement, especially over the last four weeks. Seven out of the eye, they go to Tatupu. Tatupu is kind of a second half player for the Patriots today. Didn't get much action in the first half at all, but he's had the ball much of the time here in the second. Another defensive timeout call to stop that clock, 2.53. You guys slow to get up down there in the pile, some tired players. Remember, the Pats came into the game without Robert Weathers from their running back core. He missed it with an ankle injury. So to Tupu, Craig James and Tony Collins carrying the load. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New England Patriots and the National Football League is prohibited. That's penalty on the defense on the play. Five yards and a first down. Well, in that pileup, somebody had a face mask grabbed and... Uh, things really going downhill for Atlanta in these final minutes of this game. And NFL action next week will be our doubleheader featuring Chicago and Tampa Bay in some parts of the country and followed by our doubleheader game number two, the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles, except in Atlanta. Check the local listings to see which of the first games you'll be watching. Either the Rams or the Bears. Game one and then... Eagles and the Giants in game two. Tony Collins got just to the line of scrimmage. He's stacked up there. And then Atlanta calls the last timeout at 2.47. So uh, what is happening here at Sullivan Stadium is that a lot of these people are leaving in the rain, and this is well known as the toughest place to get out of in the entire country in the NFL cities. So uh, one thing uh, with the timeouts and the rather slow pace at the finish here is that... Uh, the traffic will subside somewhat. Two forty-seven to play, and there are some of the fans heading home, feeling that the Patriots have this one in their pocket and move to six and three. Well, we try and keep track of all kinds of esoterica during the course of the football telecasts here, and. We've got a guy by the name of Bob Citrick down there in the truck, and he comes up with these nifty little things. The Williams connection on the Patriots. We mentioned how many Williams there are. None of them are related. And then you got Willie down there that uh, I'm not sure how he fits in, except it's Willie or Williams. Now, on the other side, you've got Keith Williams, Joel Williams. Bill Fralick? What's, what's that's, Well, that's Willie Citric. Fralick, right? That's Citrick for that's you. That's right. And, and William Johnson. Boy, I tell you that. <laughs> well, okay, you can tell there's 247 left with a bunch of timeouts being called here. <laughs> in a game in which the issue has been decided. The Patriots have the football, the lead, and they have a second and ten. Tony Collins and nowhere to go for him. They're driven out by Joel Williams, one of the Williams boys. And it'll be third down. 
New England looking to get the momentum back that they had last year that took them to the Super Bowl, the only team to go into that Super Bowl. Tim winning all three of their playoff games on the road. They were five and three at the break last year, and this year they're going to, they were five and three now. They're going to be six and three, and you got to ask yourself, uh, is, will this team group, will they get their running game going? Will they become the dominant team in the AFC as the end of the season approaches? If they stay healthy, I happen to think that they're one of the two or three best teams in the AFC. Uh, if you lose a guy like Tippett for any length of time, it changes things. But they do have good depth, and uh, I think the Patriots are an outstanding team in the American Conference. I wouldn't be surprised to see them back in the Super Bowl. We've got the two-minute warning here with New England on top, 25 to 17. Well, cameraman Bob Jamison shows uh, he's got true grit down there. We got him bundled up as camera too, but that's uh, what goes into uh, being a cameraman on these big network games. You got to be out there in all kinds of weather. Actually, this is like a nice spring day for him because he knows what it'll be like in December in Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's there without me. <laughs> all right, third down here and nine to go. We got two minutes left in the game. Patriots have the ball. Third down, and Atlanta is going to need some miracles here. The Tupu is stopped at the 45-yard line, and they are short of the first down, so the Falcons will get the football. But they are down by eight points with only 148 remaining. And a final score in from the NFC East. The Giants at home avenge their loss to Dallas early in the season. 17 to 14, a three-point victory, and the Giants move to seven and two atop the NFC East, depending on what the Redskins are up to, and Dallas is now six and three. There's a baseball score from San Diego, ahead of Kansas City with a safety. And the Jets leading Seattle. Zip, first period out there on the West Coast, and that game, of course, uh, Patriots fans very interested in wanting those Seahawks to dump the Jets reduce the margin in the AFC East time expires on the 32nd clock delay a game number three offense five yard penalty New England victory moves them to six and three barring miracles here in the final seconds and the Jets at seven and one playing out in Seattle Seattle in a real dogfight in the AFC West. Going into the game today at five and three, trailing at Denver. Broncos have topped that division with a seven and one mark. So the Falcons have everybody on the line of scrimmage here, try to get the rush on. Camarillo does a good job getting it away. They had everybody coming. And knocks it through the end zone for a touchback. So it'll be a long way for the Falcons with just 56 seconds remaining. A 50-yard punt. Camarillo using that win behind him. David Archer, 13 for 22 today, 122 yards. I think overall a step in the right direction, Tim, even though they are going to lose this football game. I think a step in the right direction. Did some good things. Threw the ball well today. Atlanta got their running game going. Now they've got the 80 yards to drive. Now this is a time where he can get a lot of confidence just by getting passes and getting 10, 12, 15 yards maybe. Boy, it does a world of good for a young quarterback's confidence. On first down, Archer, and he's got his man. There you go. That is Joey Jones, the first-year man from Alabama. Hustle up. USFL. Got it up to the 40-yard line. Folks, look at David Archer, number 16. Don't forget, we've got an NFL post-game show coming with scores and highlights. Keep you up to date on everything else that's happening today. We head into the second half of the season. Archer. Sideliner complete and taken out of bounds by Charlie Brown at that's midfield. See, now what this is doing, he's 15 for 24 now, about 175 yards. And what this is doing is building confidence. Completing one or two passes, getting out of bounds, stop the clock, get 15 to 20 more and drive it up. Before you know it, you've got a 15 for, or 16 for 27, Tim, 26, and then 190, 200 yards, and your confidence comes back. And, that, and that's a carryover into their, into their game next week. So it's very important, even though this is a meaningless series, very important for young David Archer. Well, an Atlanta defeat uh, doesn't really knock them out of contention. I mean, you've got uh, San Francisco losing today, so they've got some help. Archer going to run this one, and he can dangle in the middle of the field with 21 seconds left. They've used up their timeouts. 
So they're going to have to hustle to get this play off. Now the remainder of the crowd heading out, and he throws the incomplete into the ground intended in the direction of Charlie Brown. That stops the clock. Eight seconds left. Just a quick look at that. Two, Atlanta, five, three and one after today. San Francisco, five, three and one. The Rams have to play the Bears on Monday night. So uh, that's going to be an interesting race in the National Conference West. And I think Dan Henning knows that, uh, hey, let's just see how things go these next few weeks. If we can kind of hang in there, we'll be all right. And for the Patriots, they picked up some ground today. Depending on what the Jets do at Seattle, Patriots doing their job picking up victory number six. Trying to get back to the Super Bowl. They are the defending champions of the AFC. Archer for Stamps. Stamps has the blockers. Now runs out from them and gets to the 25-yard line, and that'll do it. So the New England Patriots with a solid second half and four field goals from Tony Franklin today. And another good performance by Tony Eason at quarterback. They have won their sixth game of the season to move to six and three. And Dan Henning over to congratulate Ray Berry. Ray Berry is having a hard time with the stress of this head coaching. Even when he's winning, he hadn't found it a whole lot of fun. He says, I just want to wait till the end of the season. It's like giving birth to a baby, he said. And our baby won't come until December, hopefully won't come until January. He says he never talked to a woman who said having a baby was any fun at all until the baby was born. So that's his... Is a metaphor for what it's like being a head coach of the New England Patriots here in 1986. Strange way of putting it, doesn't he? <laughs>